Hello. Ooh, and to whom it may concern. Suddenly, it's time for more mind-bending puzzles. More mind-bending than last time. And by last time, I mean the very last stream we did. All of a sudden, I'm uh, just doing another puzzle game. So soon. I apologize. I apologize for the um, flux of puzzling lately. But I can't help it. There's weird shit going on. There's weird shit going on in the gaming space. Specifically, Gorg Gorgoa. Gorgoa? Fuck. I thought I had this down. I practiced off stream. Uh, I actually practice off camera. Go I keep taking that middle O out and saying Gorgoa. Gorog Gorogoa. Gorog Gorog Gorogao? Gorogal? Goo. I'm going to say Gorogoa, but I know I'm going to fuck it up again and drop that O and call it Gorgoa again. It would have been, it would have rolled so much better off the tongue if it was just Gorgoa. That middle O just fucks me up. Anyway, that's the game that's on today. Um, it's only meant to be about a two hour experience, but I guess your mileage can vary with puzzles games. Puzzles games? Puzzle games. Um... Based on, I guess, how smart your cookie is. I mean, how quickly you get through a game like this can really be based on uh, how quickly you suss out the mechanics and figure out the puzzles. Which can sometimes mean it goes very quick and can sometimes mean that you're here for three times longer than everybody else. We'll see how that turns out today. This one, this one might be a noodle cooker. This one uh, might cook the old walnut. I've uh, seen footage of it in pictures and I can't make heads or tails of what's happening. This uh, looks surreal as fuck. Got all, um, in case you weren't aware, this is probably the most important point. 
It um, it's a puzzle made made entirely out of the surreal art of a guy named Jason Roberts. Let me uh, fact check that. Gorogoa. Jason Roberts. Yep, yeah. entirely his artwork. So basically, his surreal, abstract, fancy oil paintings or whatever, however he draws his shit, got turned into um, some funky surrealist perspective shifting panel puzzling that's a mouthful anyway let's have a look at it whoops i'm back to this screen Beep. what do they call it goragoa goragao is an inst maybe i should call it goragao it sounds like it might be more likely the way it's supposed to be said Elegant evolution of the puzzle genre, told in a beautiful hand-drawn story designed and illustrated by Jason Roberts. There you go. All Jason Roberts illustrations, which look pretty. Um, the gameplay of Gorgal is, is wholly original, comprised of lavishly illustrated panels that play as a range and combine in imaginative ways to solve puzzles, impeccably simple yet satisfyingly complex. So it's moving panels around... But how that works as a game, I guess we'll find out. See, look, two hours. We'll see about that. Yeah, name. Well, what kind of achievements we're looking at? Uh, chapter completions. Beat the falling rock puzzle on the first try. Falling rock puzzle. Finish the game. Complete the game in under 500 moves. Not going to happen. Beat the game in under 30 minutes, not going to happen. Complete the original 2012 demo. Oh, cool. They included the demo in the thing, and it's got its own achievement. That's neat. These two... There's two interesting ones here. Hang on. It's not that many achievements. 100 each. Okay, let's... Um, let's cover this. Achievements. Achievements. Okay, I've looked at this once in the past. Seems like it. That one. Fuck. That one and that one. Those two can go to hell. Do you have to unlock this or is it there from the beginning? Oh, you have to complete the main game to unlock the demo. That's weird. Can you play the demo after you finish the game? <laughs> That's ass backwards. Good job, game. From the green fruit in chapter three, a few minutes into the level, I believe the puzzle starts when you zoom into the rock container. The achievement will pop as soon as the rock hits the glass at the end. Interesting. Let's see what that involves. Fuck. Wait. Oh, there's chapter select? <laughs> oh, that's that. Wait, back? Okay, that must be where it starts. Wait, how did that change? Oh, you... okay. see what they mean now about panel sliding. You don't have much time to figure it out, do you?
So I guess breaking that is what the achievement unlocks. All right. Got it. What about the other one? Okay, a lot of people confused in the um a lot of people confused in the achievements for these. We'll see. Can we go back? What do the reviews look like? Amazing game, really short, but absolutely worth your time. Beautiful haunting, cute little surrealist story, and great puzzles. Five stars. Five stars again, great indie puzzle game, refreshing gameplay, creative storytelling. So a lot of indie fans here that are giving this its proper due. Haven't seen any whingers yet giving it one, two stars because they hate puzzle games. So why the fuck are you even here reviewing this? Fresh puzzle game. Beautiful puzzle game. What a wild game. People are pretty jazzed. Fine, I guess. Three stars. Okay, he's saying it's fine, but didn't really rock his world. That's that's as low as it gets. Swabu. And that three-star review going, yeah, it's alright. Wow. Good job, Jason Roberts. Alright. Let's get into it. See what's what. Mmm, Annapurna Interactive. They never do me wrong. They're becoming my one of my favorite games publishers now. Everything they make is crash hot. Uh, yes. Just fucking let this act access your info bullshit. They do it every single time. Buried Signal presents Gorgal. Oh, are we just are we diving right in? I think we're diving right in. What does Paige do? Whoa. Cool! It must be Chinese New Year. In Valencia. Okay. What does this page do? Oh, hello. Chapter select. What is this? Okay, that must be a highlighter to show you what you can interact with. That's about it. All right. Interesting. So, do I... The game just started. There's no main menu at all. In fact, this is exactly what the pedestrian did recently. It just launches you right in the game. No fanfare. Oh, we can zoom out. Chinese New Year? In March? What do you say? Not a fish. Not coral. Pipes? Ah! Chinese New Year Dragon. Offer it a bowl of fruit. Why is that me? <laughs> you're wearing the same shirt, has the same colored hair. Boy, you're in the book. What do I do? Zoom in? Alright. This one? Cool. This one? Nice. Okay, we're thinking about the bowl of fruit. Seeing Chinese New Year Dragon made him hungry. I'm so good at interpreting story from artwork. I'm a genius. I'm actually being tutorialized. Move panel. What the fuck? Oh. Neat. Little hieroglyphics are appearing all over the page. So is that... Dragon thing not fake and not meant to be there? Is that why Child is alarmed? That's the symbol that was on the uh, the, uh, the fruit in the bowl. Okay, do I drag that? Oh, what the fuck? Okay, it's weird how you can 
tear layers of photos. Reveal different stuff. So now I have a window and a door. I can move that as well. I can go this way, I guess. Hello. Child with damaged head sees crow. The plot has thickened. Oh, crow. Hi. Uh, can I pull the crow off? Interesting. I can zoom out of the window. Ah. So every panel, no matter where you tear it from another panel, it has its own characteristics, whether it can be zoomed in, out, or whether you can move around the environment. That chair moved really trippy. Looking for a bowl of fruit. You at least found a bowl. The quest for five pieces of multicolored fruit commences. <laughs> He's a little perplexed. Um, if I put the doorway back over this doorway, because it looks like they'll line up, will he exit the building? Yes. Okay. I think I understand how this game works now. You're looking for things that can be removed to make new elements, or added to make new elements. Like lining up doorways and windows... To enter and exit new areas, that kind of bullshit. I don't know what to do with the crow. What are you doing here? I can separate this again. Good. Where can I get red fruit for my bowl? The child wonders. Hmm. Oh, can I can zoom in on the bowl? And again? close we want to get here. There's something Monty Python-esque about all these elements. What am I doing with this bowl? What can I do in this hand? Oh, I can zoom out through the doorway. Hang on. Painting of fruit. We're getting somewhere. Can I line it up with the crow's tree? Oh. Okay, if I can get panels to reach the right environmental angles, I can actually put them together to make larger images. What if I put this below the apple? Can... <gasps> Progress! Apple achieved. What are you confused about? You wanted a red you wanted a red fruit in your bowl, you got it. Stupid child. Oh fuck. Complete chapter one. Well that was quick. How many chapters are there? Five or something? This might not take long. He says, underestimating how difficult this is probably going to get. I have a feeling this is going to get absolutely absurd with complexity. I see another symbol. What the fuck? In a doorway. Huh? I'm gonna need to check all the panels. Child in wheelchair. Without bandage on head. Dreams of walking up that thing. Is that my goal? He has a bowl. Sorry, that rhymed. Bars. This might be my goal. Green symbol. We're after the green fruit, I guess, in this chapter. Those doorways line up. This is a good start. This is getting a little complicated now. Uh, interesting. Also interesting. Oh, also interesting. Worship. Green fruit door. Green fruit door opens. It's a pasture of green fruit. Get it off the statue. That must be a hint. I have to get through there somehow. Which means I need the child, the blind child, to pray at the wall. These are things I'm saying out loud. I think before I zoom down here, I need to get this child out of this panel. 
Wait. Idea. Okay, good. That looks like progress to me. Okay. Well, wheelchair child will be happy. I got ball child to climb the stairs. Is that meant to be him from different timelines? Past, present, and future? Like, is that future him in the wheelchair? Like, the bandage is fresh from the injury, and then without the bandage is him later, but still wheelchair bound. Maybe for life. What am I supposed to do with you now? Oh, wait. Another doorway. Now I'll come out here. Put that away. Okay, we've got him to that. Now what? Oh, he fucked off. Bro! <laughs> I thought the whole point was to get to this door. What? <laughs> That's what the mural says. Pray at the door, opens up, get the cabbages off the lady, the goddess lady statue. Success. I need goddess cabbage. Hi, Tenna. Oh yeah, I was dealing with um, some social media stuff, unfortunately. But I've um, sorted it out now. What am I supposed to do with this pillow? That's just an embroidery of how I got the red fruit. I don't think that means anything. Fucking bacon my noodle man. Where did the child go? There he is. Staring at bricks and then you let you fucked off again. Cool. I'm glad I'm the only one trying to solve puzzles here. Little jackass. Oh yeah, I was just I was having some issues with Facebook and Instagram um uh striking me and uh, giving me strikes on my account. Um which was a bit frustrating. I got my uh, Facebook chat banned for 24 hours. I wasn't allowed to chat to anybody. And then on Instagram, a whole separate issue was giving me a strike for um, hate speech, which was bullshit. For one of my story posts. So that was um, really angering me. I'm going to drink more coffee. Princess Juice will get, put me in a good mood. I probably should elaborate, eh? Um, you remember when I was playing um, Iron Harvest? The strategy game? Hate speech, who cares? Well, the thing is, like, hate speech is bad. Like, but I'm talking about the actual definition of hate speech. Like, if you're being racist and you're calling for violence against a real living person, that's hate speech and that is bad i understand why that would be that would be actionable because you could be putting someone in real life in danger with your words like it's not cool um the thing that i'm frustrated and um offended by by this accusation is that um i made a post on instagram in my instagram story about iron harvest and it was a post showing a picture of general zubat the villain of the game the russian uh general villain who's always in that mech and it was a picture of him standing on the top of his mech poking out the top and I made a post joking about how um, the entire throughout the entire game you're hunting and trying to kill this guy but during the cutscenes he's always coming out of his mech and monologuing and doing speeches where the characters just stand around and listen angrily shake their fists and I made a joke about how like why don't they like the main character Anna's a sniper why don't they just take the shot while he's sticking out of his mech giving a speech during the cutscenes. If they just got him then, then the war would be over. Like, that's the joke I was making. And my account got a strike for hate speech for that. Which is completely ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd. Because you can't... You can't be guilty of hate speech if you're joking about shooting the bad guy endgame boss in a video game like a he's not real b he's the video he's a video game antagonist he's the villain he's the one who the entire plot of the game is based around trying to kill him like once we defeat the boss the game's over we win like that's the point of the game 
So like me joking about, oh, why don't they just take take the the sh wasn't the sniper just take the shot during the one of the cutscenes where he's always monologuing outside of his tank because obviously he's now vulnerable. Like, how the fuck is that hate speech? Like, it can't be hate speech unless you're speaking to homophobia, racism, something that calls for violence and anger against a real world people or a real world person that you specifically hate and want something to happen to. Like, I ranted about this last night, because that was when I was right in the middle of it first happening. Uh, when I was first trying to deal with it. It, um, it really made me angry, because, like, I appealed the decision, because the algorithm catches it. So when you appeal the decision, a human being has to look at it and confirm whether to undo the strike, because it was incorrect, the algorithm was incorrect, or whether to uphold it. And they upheld it. So a human being looked at that, looked at my picture of a... 3D video game character standing on a like, on a mech warrior, and me saying about how how we should shoot the bad guy of the video game. That is the whole point of the game in the first place. That's the goal, and they somehow determined, yep, that's still hate speech. Keep the strike. Put your account in jeopardy. Like if they do that one or two more times, yeah, like it's not fair. Like it's absolutely not fair. Because that is not hate speech. Like, I feel like I've been fucked with here. Like, if that happens one or two more times, I can legitimately lose my Instagram account. And it won't be my fault. Like, all they have to do is uh, misconstrue or give me a, bu a bullshit strike again for something else that makes no sense that I can't control. And, like, I can get into even more trouble. So, that's what I was. that's why I was so angry. Like, if I did something that legitimately was against the community terms and service, then that's fair. I'll, I'll take that on the chin. Like, if I posted porn, like, actual nudity, then it's like, okay, that's fair, I deserve a strike for that. But I just, like, it makes me angry that I got a legitimate strike that got appealed and upheld based on something that I know for a fact is incorrect. That I am not in the wrong. We cannot joke about the fact that video game bad guys, <laughs> like, have to be fought. Like, how insane is that? Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting about it because I already, I already went on about this last night and it, it's pretty clear that I'm very annoyed by it because every time I bring it up, I, I fucking rant about it again. You use Telegram and Discord because your friends use them? That's fair. Everyone seems to be digging on Discord. Okay, that's all the princess juice finished. Uh, I'm caffeinated up. Um, where did the child go? He looked at the brick wall and left. Okay, he's waiting at the symbol. Um, archway with the symbol and a garden. Yeah? Wait. Wait. Um, we think about this. You never understood the appeal of Twitter and Facebook? I mean, I, I do. Like, I like... Uh, Facebook is a bit old. Um, that's a bit that's a bit of a boomer social platform now. Like, I don't really look at it too much. I use Messenger to talk to everyone I know. But the actual Facebook feed itself, I don't pay much attention to. Um, I like Instagram. I like Twitter. I like TikTok. I've got no problem with any of those. Twitter's a bit of a wild west, but at least it has freedom. Like, Twitter, you can legitimately post porn, or whatever. Like, there's no hardcore restrictions. Whereas Facebook and Instagram are uh, very censored. Like, you gotta be careful what you post on those, because there's guidelines. But yeah, Twitter, Twitter's a lot more freeform. You still can't do hate speech or... Uh, anything that be, can, can be construed as, like, fucked up or illegal. Or inciting to violence. Um, which is fair, because that's a legal issue, but... When it comes to generally what you say and, like, what you post, you can just post your dick on there if you want. Like, you can post your own amateur porn off your phone. Like, Twitter won't give a fuck. So, you know, I kind of like that it's a... a bit of a more free-form Wild West, but... 
there's a lot of trash on there too. Like some of the most toxic people are on Twitter. Like go to Twitter if you want to have a really stupid argument about something that doesn't matter. With some like toxic uh, internet weirdo. You heard that Facebook became more free for not safe for work stuff? Oh, I don't think so. It's Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same corporation and they're fairly controlling of that stuff. They're not, they're, they've eased off a little bit on what you can say in posts. Um, they're trying not to be too uh, sensory about free speech, but when it comes to not safe for work, they're still pretty, like, don't go posting in, like, nudity or um, anything pornographic on there. They will bust that. Um... This cupboard must mean something. There's a lady grabbing a star and putting in a lantern. There's a lantern. Is there a star? Can I do anything with this panel? No. Star. Star. What am I missing here? Oh, wait. Okay, I can rip the door off the sign. Oh, what am I playing? Um, Gorogal. I think. I, I'm not entirely sure how to spell the name. You can probably see it in my... Uh, in my Twitter headline. Gorogal or Gorogoa. I'm not sure which pronunciation is correct. But it's a puzzle game made out of this guy's uh, artwork. This dude named Jason Roberts. This is all his um, surrealist artwork. And it's all about shifting perspectives to progress. From what I can glean so far, this is all about a child who sees a Chinese dragon of some sort and looks it up in a book. And I think, I think he becomes alarmed by some kind of prophecy that has to do with five pieces of fruit with these different colored symbols in it on them and he's now trying to collect them all in a bowl I've actually lost that child I don't know how to get back to him there he is there's the bowl I've got the red fruit judging by the green symbol everywhere we're going for the green one next I just have to figure out how to get to it um, and the way we get to it I think is this painting that doorway where he's standing in front of opens to reveal some kind of garden with a statue that's going to give us the green fruit. I just have to figure out how to make that happen. And it has something to do with putting a star into this lantern, I think. This one right here. I should have figured out how to do that. Can I put something on this sign? I don't think I can. I need to make him kneel. It's tricky to know how to manipulate stuff. Like, there's a there's a method to it. You can always move panels around, and sometimes they connect up in ways that actually make things happen. Uh, you can overlap panels in ways that sometimes make things happen. Um, and you can zoom in and out of scenes. Like to get into this room, I was in that room back there on the side, and I zoomed outwards back into this room, and now I'm stuck in here. There's a lot of zooming in and out, there's a lot of moving panels around in different arrangements, and there's a lot of overlapping of elements. That's like the three mechanics. Okay, wait, wait. This... The top right part of the mural. I think if we place this door over this... Here we go. Alright, we got something. We got something. I have lost the child. He's gone. But I've got two lesbians feeding each other apples. <laughs> A little horn bag likes it. Okay, what does this mean? Can I zoom in more? Yes. Oh, what the fuck? 
I wasn't expecting that. I've accidentally pulled the rock texture out of the apple. <laughs> what the fuck do I do with this? Oh shit, hang on. Can you zoom in on the pillow in the bottom right? Oh hey Tanky! I almost didn't see you there. Yes you can. The pillow in the bottom right is just depicting how I got the uh, the red fruit. I arranged the uh, the panels in a way that connected the tree and the bowl to make the apple fall into the bowl. So that's how I got the first fruit. So I don't think the pillow has any other use. It's like this painting, it's just kind of showing you a hint as to what you need to be doing. Uh, this game is trippy. This game is a... Uh, it's like being on drugs. This game is, a, is an acid trip. Wait, I can zoom out? Oh, there's more to this image. It's an apocalypse. With an older version of the child still mulling over the Chinese dragon he saw. Okay. The fuck? Oh, that's the other thing I've noticed. I think the game's story is being told across three different time periods. Past, present, and future. Because past child starts the game off by find, seeing the dragon and finding the book, the prophecy book about the five fruit. And then sometimes I'll go into panels and I'll pull out into other time periods where he's in a wheelchair and he's injured. Or in this case he's old and decrepit in like an apocalypse. So I think I'm jumping around time, catching up with him at different points trying to solve what the prophecy means. Really trying hard to follow along. <laughs> Is something on the wall. Oh my god, this is getting deeper and deep. What the fuck? Whoa, dude! What? Okay, that's never happened before. Uh, 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 can I do something with the apple? Wait, I can show something through the apple. Maybe if I put this in the right spot. Alright, there we go. We made the apple green with the eye of the dragon. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Does that mean we've done it? Okay, he's happy. Completed chapter two. We have green apple. We have red apple, we have green apple. Just three more fruit to go. He's taking a breather. Not like you have to do much thinking. Alright, now we need a yellow fruit. I'm guessing we're going for a lemon? Statue says lemon is this way. Oh, wait. I zoomed out to the boy in a different time period, thinking about himself in the past, thinking about the lemon. <laughs> I'm losing my fucking mind. What's he reading? Dragons, pigeons, doves, and fairies. I gotta pay attention. Uh, the circle in a butterfly wing. He's got an arrow pointing to it. I think this is the same time period as World War Two that Tanky mentioned. Because I can hear war sirens outside the window. Um, crayons. Nothing else. What is this? Nope, still the same. Okay. Oh, wait, this has changed. I can go up. There's a star. Okay, wait. We know what to do with this. This this wardrobe gave it away. Lantern. Over star. Should capture it. We have light. What do we do with light? We look through a window. Another lantern. What? Uh. Another star. Okay. Wait. What's this? The shelf is fucked. Nails. Crayons. 
So I can I can break this. But to what what are we trying to do though? What the fuck are we trying to do? Oh hi, brother. Hi, brother. Brother Shane. Hello, Art and Sean. Art got the first hello, not Sean. Oh, he's thinking about the lantern, so he wants light. Uh, how do we get him light? If I could put that star in... Wait, can I... No, I can't rip the, the window out. Can zoom into that. Um. Am I missing something obvious here? Wait. No. I'm gonna zoom in on the. Okay, there's pencils. Can I put the star in the. No. Oh! Holy shit! Oh, Biscoff and Hut. Okay. Biscoff is. is worthy of a greeting. Biscoff greeting. I'll accept that as a hello. No one needs to say hi or hello. Put Biscoff in me. You've been trying to Deathless Chapter 7 in Celeste for five hours? Jesus Christ. I'm not sure if I'm, um... If I'm looking forward to getting, uh, getting um, to Celeste or not. Because I still have to stream Celeste one day, and I feel like I'm going to cry when I do. You just have to mix Biscoff into coffee or to make coffee? No, there's not... What, what do you mean coffee? Biscoff has nothing to do with coffee. Where'd you get that from? Hang on, let me get my water. <clears throat> it's not Biscoffy, it's just Biscoff. It's Lotus Biscoff Paste. It's a spread like peanut butter and Nutella. There ain't no coffee involved. I just like to eat it out of the jar because it's delish. Normal Celeste is fucking amazing. What do you mean normal Celeste? Are you playing DLC? Oh, Deathless Golden Strawberries. So you have to get the golden strawberries without dying? It's a bit rough. Alright, what have I done here? I've ripped the pencils off the box. Now they zoom out to be their own image. Clouds. Rocks. Huh? Can I do that with this as well? Holy shit, I can. Cotton wool. A half horse, half triple mermaid. That is fucking rad. <laughs> what kind of toy is that? I think... I think I'm supposed to change the packaging so that the boxes weigh the same. Nails and colored pencils don't weigh the same. But... Maybe cotton wool. Wait. There we go. And clouds... Do they weigh the same? Uh, maybe I don't have to weigh the same. Maybe I have to tip the scales the other way. Let's go with asteroids. Yep, there we go. 
We've swapped sides. Be interesting. The golden strawberries are the deathless. If you pick one up at the start of a level, when you die, it throws you back to the start. Oh, so as soon as you pick it up, it basically becomes a deathless run. Jesus Christ. If this wonder if this game will have a similarly mind blowing plot twist like the pictures become an open world you can roam around in. Oh like like the pedestrian. It's funny because both this and the pedestrian, two puzzle games I play one after the other, they both started the same way. They both started by just launching you directly into the gameplay without any menus or anything. Like the game just starts. Like a like you turned a movie on. Um so why did I... Oh, okay, we brought the lantern to his side. Now we need to put light in it. With this. Yep. Rock and roll. Star is in lantern. We've attracted yellow butterfly. The butterfly is some kind of key... Because the book showed a picture of a yellow butterfly. I think that's how we make the yellow fruit. Where are we zooming in here? There's the symbol. That's what we need. Can I rip it off? Yes, I can. There's that statue again. Yellow is that way. Hey, Chinese myth dragon. It's Chinese New, New Year's, by the way. In uh, this world, I guess. It's a moth, not a butterfly. I am so sorry. I offended the moth brethren. I can't do anything with this panel anymore. What about this one? Well, I've left a hole in the butterfly. The, sorry, the moth's wing. But we have light. Guy pointing with yellow fruit. Can we go in there? Oh, yes, we can. Nice. I accidentally connected those two up early. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, what the fuck? Wait. Uh, this didn't amount to much. Let's go down here. What's up, kid? What's he researching now? Apocalypse? Meteors? Butterfly. Can I do nothing here? Okay. I can go back. How far can I go back? How do I get the kid to get closer? Something's changing. Horse constellation. What does that mean? Horse hydra? Well, it's cool. Can I rip it out? Oh. Well, there's the moon. There's another star. I'm guessing one of these two are important. It's just... Can I capture the star in this? Right. Down. Yep. We have more light! You can't get out. What have we done? It's a moth, not a butterfly. Moth brethren. Must report you for moth hate speech. What's, ever, what's with everyone and moths lately? You're all siding with the moth against me. There's 70, 175 strawberries, but the golden ones and a few others bump the maximum to 202. Jesus Christ. I think I'm supposed to get the moth out of this glass thing, because it's got a big crack on it. That's a clue. What if I do the moon instead? Hang on. 
Oh, I can't. Okay, never mind. We can zoom out though. And pan the camera. That's new. Jesus Christ. Let's get the shit out of me. Oh god, what's happening? Hang on. I don't understand. Wait. these rocks doing? Hang on. Does this connect up in any way? Um. Hang on. These, these two... Okay, wait. There's something going on here. Hang on. These banners are the same. I think I think you're under something there, Tenor. The rock breaking the glass. I just have to figure out how to get it there. If I zoom back far enough, can I zoom? No. Like this? Oh! Those connect. Holy shit. Doesn't help me, but... Those two banners will also connect. Watch this. Alright, okay. I think I, I see what's going on here. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Bounces off that. There. Okay. Here we go. I've done something. Uh, flip it. Zoom it out. Zoom it in. Ooh. This is trippy. Alright, flip it again. Zoom it in. Zoom it in. Yes. Complete the falling rock puzzle on the first try. First try, my ass. What do you mean, first try? <laughs> that took me ages. We lost so many rocks. I think I might have glitched that achievement. Okay, well, we have a moth. Now what we need is... Light. Now, how did we do that before? Star. Zoom in. Put it over. All right, Moth is happy. Do I rip this out of his wing again? Yep. Okay, cool. Now what? Oh, if I zoom all the way out of the building, I think this environment will connect. Like that. Hey! They're all pointing to go this way, if you want lemons. We're on a lemon journey. Also, Chinese dragon. Bowl of fruit. Red, green, yellow acquired? No, I don't have yellow yet. We must be almost there, though. Let's zoom out. What the fuck is this? What are you doing? Researching more dragons. Give me something I can use, boy. Something about a clock. Wait, six, seven... About 7.25 on the clock? To some blue star. Um... Has this anything changed here yet? Oh, this is new. I don't recall being able to zoom in on this. I mean, that's not a clock. 
But it, it's kind of a similar clock face to this. Although it's looking at the wrong spot. It needs to be there. Moths are in a flurry after the pity achievement? It does feel like a pity achievement, eh? Because, like, for real, you saw that go down. Like, how many rocks fell before I solved that puzzle. That could not have been my first try. Unless they mean... Unless the first bounce doesn't count, and it's once I start actually getting the, the rock to move through the different panels, if I fuck it up and have to start again, maybe that's what they mean by first try. Seven twenty three. Now you offended both Mox and Cl I was close enough. Um, I think I need to steal this off this uh, decanter and somehow build a clock out of it. Can I rip this out of the? Oh, I can put it over stuff, so that works. Anything else? Oh, holy shit. I did not know I could do that. There's another clock. Okay, that that's, that's definitely what we're supposed to be achieving. That time on the clock. First try since the rock left its art. Yeah, okay, that, that's that's what I think's going on. I think that's dead on. It didn't feel like my first try, but I think once you get the puzzle rolling, once it's left the first panel, I think that's what it, when it counts as what try you're on. Once we figured out what we we're doing, though, we kind of nailed it very quickly. Uh, I guess we're going over to this. Can I pull it out? Yes, I can. Now what? table. What's this? Blue... Blue compass points pointing at a star. A blue star. There's the blue clock hand. We need that. I don't think that one's relevant. That's how we got here. What about the child? He's gone to bed. But we have a globe. And a star. You have no idea what's happening. That's what you... Yeah. You and me both. I'm the one sitting here clicking trying to figure it out. <laughs> I feel like I'm on mushrooms. Oh, that's a moon. Okay, the, the moth likes the moon. We have a blue star. Doesn't work. I can probably capture this in here. Then zoom out. Okay, we've got the correct... I think we have the correct minute hand. What the fuck, what the fuck is this? Oh, it's this. Okay, we got we got the minute hand. That's, that's locked in. We need to somehow get this. Can I just overlay it? How does... Like that? <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, look at that! That's what that piece of paper was that's what that piece of paper was alluding to the blue minute hand always points towards the blue star like a compass I don't know if that helps me though can I why can't I put this on here first Then zoom out. I 
I think you're right. Uh, I have to somehow heat up the decanter to move the little red dial before I put it on the clock. So it's aiming in the right direction. You're half paying attention to the Stickman game? You didn't know what's happening? I think I saw it. There was an achievement for something to for getting this wrong. Let me just double check. Uh, wait. Where is my? Ah, there it is. This game's gonna be short. We've completed. We're on chapter three of five already. Set the clock tower to the right. To the right wrong time. The right wrong time? Interesting. I wonder what they mean by right wrong time. Let me look that up. Oh, it says here, to get the right wrong time, the blue hand should be pointing southeast. No, south. And then the red hand pointing as normal, which must be southeast. Let's see if we can do that. Still waiting for the MFE stream? The fuck is MFE? You can't just say acronyms, champ. <laughs> no one knows what you're talking about. Hang on. Fuck, just... Please move. There we go. Yep. Okay, before I can make that happen, I need to solve this. How do we heat up a decanter? We need fire. How do we acquire fire? A moon, maybe? Nope. How far back can I zoom out of this? Oh, I can move around the room. Here we go. I didn't think to do this before. Moon is... There's fire. Alright. You don't think you play many short games, to be honest? I like to play as many as possible, because short games... Uh, you get to have the experience in a nice, tight amount of time, start to finish. You start it, you scratch your head, you laugh, you cry, you whoop, you holler, and then like a couple of hours later you're done in one sitting. And then you go, wow, that was a cool experience, next game. I love it. I love short games. Uh... So, can I... Oh, wait. I think these two are going to connect. Hang on. Look at this. Genius. That's correct. Now... Boom. The child is gone. I think by the right wrong time, they mean any time that's after 7.23 that's being depicted in this page. So I set it to 7.30, so the child has already gone to bed. I think that's what the achievement was looking for. They're just a bit vague. <laughs> that was great. Found that fascinating. Let's get this clock fixed, shall we? The rest of this should be hella easy. Uh, we need the star. The north star. Magnetized. And we need it pointing southeast. 
I need to rip the clock apart. There we go. Put it back together. I think that's the correct time. Zoom out. Golden hour. There it is. The Star of David. But why did we need a star, I wonder? Let's put it inside the moon. There you go, moth. Why do I keep... Dick riding this moth. This is the third or fourth time now that I've worked hard to give this moth light, but to what end? To just rip the yellow shit out of its wing again? Why do I keep doing that? The fuck is this? <laughs> oh, that's a terrible tree. Whoever designed this tree is a is a sick man. Sorry, moth. I got some weird shit going on here. Um, can I wake the child up? Nope. Uh, uh. I think I can connect up this somehow. Child. Walk that way. There we go. I'm trying to make panels where multiple statues are all pointing in the same direction to get him moving from the looks of it. I think we've reached the lemon tree. Success. Please, sir, may I have a lemon? Yes. A star lemon, that'll do. A lemon gifted by the gods. Mama would be so proud. And he fucked off again. Completed chapter three. Hey! We're, we're geniuses. Can we consider this moth abuse? I don't know, man. We keep on... We keep on giving the moth what he wants. He keeps getting that sweet, sweet light. Over time, you've really come to love games. You can absorb other content in the background, not pay attention to story. I mean, that is true. Like, nobody can play all games that are out there. So sometimes it's nice to just uh, use Twitch streams or Let's Plays to experience something in like a bite-sized way that you'd never actually play yourself. You just know that you'd never, it's not something you'd ever get around to playing or care to play, but at least you like got a little bit of the experience in a different way. Oh my God. Okay. That was a huge zoom out. What else? Oh, this room is still in play. Okay. What, what can we do here? Can we go into any painting we want? Holy shit, we can. Alright, we're going for the blue fruit. Which looks like it's right there. So I think the challenge is going to be getting the child to this panel. Uh, somehow. Which, we're probably going to have to come back to this one much later. Hello, Grandpa. Oh, they actually tell you, look, the post-its. Blue symbol this way. Enter here. What about this one? Someone's painted a trail of blue symbols. I think that's part of the pathway to get there. This panel is also currently useless. Uh, question mark. Travel between the two stars on horseback. That might be a clue. There's a blue symbol doorway. There's a lot going on in this in this chapter. The more they give you to work with, the more confusing it gets. Like the number of places you can scroll, zoom, and things you can fuck with, the more difficult the puzzles get. Because there's just so many moving parts. If I, wait, if I can match that doorway with the symbol up with the blue one, where did we see that? There. Can I rip that out of the picture? I cannot. Fuck. Can I do anything with the child? Child wants to walk upstairs. To get here. Oh boy. 
It's nice to vicariously enjoy a game through someone else. Yeah, for, for sure. Especially story like like heavily linear story stuff that are of a genre of gameplay that you don't care for are really good. Because then it's like four to six hours of very linear story that you can watch like you're watching a movie. And then you can skip the actual gameplay part, which is something you wouldn't enjoy. Like some people don't like uh, button mashy action games. But if a button mashy action game has like a very cool linear story with lots of cutscenes, it's pretty fun to watch someone else play it. And then you never have to touch a controller. Or like action games like Max Payne or something. If you dig the story, but you might not like third-person action games, you run around diving and shooting guns. Perfect Twitch content for you. I think I need to do more with this second panel here. Wait, yes, here we go, this is new. He's dreaming about falling to his death. Same, bro. Relatable as fuck. <laughs> How about that depression, huh? Can we zoom in on that? Or is that just... Oh, I can actually rip him out of the equation. Now another man is dreaming about the same child falling. And the dragon. What the fuck is happening? I think this is the child, as an adult, still freaked out by the dragon prophecy. I think it's all the same character that we keep seeing. In different timelines. Can I do anything with this? Yes. Okay. This is getting fucking weird. That panel's useless. Okay, this one we can... We got a map. No dragon. Saucepan. <laughs> no horse with poison ivy... Wooden tail. Uh, no serpent ring bell. And then some... T oh my god. I'm starting to get to the baked noodle part of the experience. Horror games are perfect for that. Oh yeah, 100%. That's why horror games are so huge as Let's Plays on YouTube and as Twitch streams. But horror games always have really good immersion and um, storytelling as well. You can really, um, you, it's very, it's perfect backseat, um, backseat gaming. Oh, here's something. We got books. I can really zoom in on this one. We have a hole that we can see things through with a blue flower. Oh, there's so many things I can do. There's the bell. From that post-it. Ringing the bell scares away a serpent. Don't know what to do with this. Um, a little black girl is touching a statue's ball. Of course. Of course. Can I get out of this? No, okay, we're stuck in this book screen, so this is definitely... These three need to be used for something. That panel is now locked in for some reason. I can't change that. What about this? Oh, holy shit. Um, where's the child? Here we go. Here we go. First bit of progress. Child has made it up the steps. Now if I rip this away, using the other painting. Oh, Jesus Christ. Thanks, dragon. <laughs> the old man in the green shirt has revealed his bell and anal beads. He stares at them pensively. Which one shall he shove up his anus? Will it be the anal beads? The obvious choice. Or will he go for the candle or the bell today? Living dangerously, perhaps. Interesting. Well, we have access to a bell now, which will have something to do with this. Uh, 
beautiful artistic concept in this game. Yeah, all the art is by an artist named Jason Roberts. They basically created a perspective shifting surrealist puzzle game out of all of this guy's art. Which is actually like pretty clever. Um, what happens if I zoom out of this nighttime scene now? Okay, that's all changed. Oh, that's changed heaps. Can I go into any one of these? Yep. But they're not oriented correctly. Whoa, dude. There's another doorway, but it's sideways. Don't think that's going to help. I think this is the important one. Because this one can be entered and there's a doorway with the blue symbol. So i got to re remember that. Also, I'm not entirely sure if I'm on the right track here, but I have I have a little bit of an epiphany here. Notice how that this circle is connected like a cog to another circle with um, the serrated teeth. I think that means something. I think I've seen that somewhere else before. Uh, this. Look, look at this. The blue flower has serrated teeth. So if I go to this and do that, or this, wait. There's some kind of mechanic here to do with cogs. I, I can I can fucking see it. I just don't know how to manipulate it yet. Uh... I bet you enjoyed The Witness. Oh yeah, I 100%ed uh, I The Witness. I got all the achievements. Uh, the final achievement is probably one of my best... Um, it's probably one of my best accomplishments, actually. Because the final achievement of The Witness, or the final trophy, is a very high skill level achievement. It, you can't cheese it. You can't cheat it. Because they take every single puzzle uh, type in the game and they make you do like a whole slalom, like a gauntlet of puzzles of every single type, one after the other, with a seven minute time limit in a secret cave that you have to find a, a way into. It's not part of the main story. And the puzzles are created via algorithm. So there's no actual solutions available online because they're actually being created by the, by the, the maths of the AI, of the code. So you've got no idea what kind of puzzles you'll get or how to solve them. You, j you legitimately have to be as you have to be so good at every type of puzzle in the game that you can smash out a seven minute slalom of all of them without running out of time not knowing what you're going to get every single time you try some people some people have tried that to get that achievement for months like it's a it's a notoriously um high difficulty level one but the clever thing about it is that it um it weeds out the cheaters because every other puzzle in the game a part of the main game around the island that all leads up to the ending they're all pre-constructed by the uh the game designers so technically you can cheat the entire the entirety of the witness by just looking up all the solutions uh throughout the entire game and just like blaze through it if that's all you're looking to do is farm it but this is how insidious the developers are. They created that final secret achievement room, the basic as a as a final fuck you to anybody that cheated their way through the game, because the only way you're going to be good enough to actually get that final achievement is if you play through the game properly and have the experience of completing all the puzzles yourself, so you know exactly how they work and you actually get good at them. If you cheated up to that final room, <laughs> you're going to have a really hard time. <laughs> you did the challenge in four attempts. See there, it's like tanky smashed it. It's in, depending. That's the thing as well. It's because it's based on um, uh, RNG. Like you've got no idea what kind of puzzles you're gonna get because they're all procedurally generated by the AI. If you're no, if you know how the puzzles work and you're good at them, in like four attempts you could get like a good layout that you smash out in just like a couple of tries. Or you could be really unlucky. And get an RNG that gives you really hard puzzles, even if you're good at them, and like have to basically um, grind the game for days before you smash it. 
It's right up there with stuff like, uh, what's that achievement in uh, Call of Duty? Was it Modern Warfare? Um, was it called the Mile High? Was it called Mar the Mile High achievement? It was the one for doing the final level on the plane in like a few seconds on veteran difficulty. Yeah. That's another one of those notorious achievements that's quite difficult to get. Like there's a lot of luck involved and a lot of skill. You need both. What you're saying is Witness is the roguelike of puzzle games? Well, no, I wouldn't say that because the game itself is not like that. The entirety of the game is fully structured, designed by the developers to... Like, all the puzzles are exactly designed exactly one way. Which is why it's so easy to cheat through the whole game if you just look up all the solutions. It's just that one final secret room that you can miss. Yeah, just that one achievement. Just that one secret cave with that one challenge. They basically, yeah, roguelike that one puzzle. Fully RNG based. But yeah, it's a very it's a very good game. It's pretty clever. There are moments where certain things to do with the environment click in terms of how you're supposed to like change the perspective to make things line up that are that are very clever. They kind of blow your mind slightly. <laughs> okay. The Witness is a very satisfying achievement or trophy hunting uh, accomplishment, though. Because it's not just a turn your brain off and smash out the uh, the platinum kind of game. You actually have to put some, some thought and skill into it. Nothing compared to the final puzzle of the Looker. I still need to play the Looker one day. I'll stream that someday. I've got it on my uh, on my Steam. Okay, where were we with this? Let's, let me just rewind this in my brain real quick. We need to go back to this, this panel. This child needs to make it through these panels. That's what the post-its are saying. So now I need to get into this one, then to this one, and then into the final one where the door is back here. So to get him into this panel... I think we need to line up some doorways somehow. No? No? These two doorways is how we get from this portrait to this portrait, but getting from top to bottom is a bit strange. Uh... Hang on. Okay, I was just checking. Okay, it's something to do with this one. I need him to walk off screen to somewhere else. So somewhere else in here, there must be a screen. This. This one lines up with this panel, but I need it to turn counterclockwise. How do I turn this counterclockwise? Okay. It's starting to click. That's why it looks like a gear. We need to turn this gear so that it's literally upside down to what it is now, so that this one is right way up. No. I'm lying. This is just 90 degrees counterclockwise. So this needs to go one turn to the left. So it's on this side. Most puzzles are quite creative using reflections and real life scenery. Cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, I was very impressed with that game. Getting it was damn relaxing. Just running around the island finding every single EP and record tape. Yeah, it's a... Um, it's a nice experience. Like, it's just a cool place to be. That island. It's got a nice uh, aesthetic and vibe to it. Oh, you mean horde mode? Not horse. <laughs> okay, we need to figure out how to... This is the next 
We need to turn this now. We need to find out how to do this. I don't think I've really looked at this stuff yet. What does this do? What the fuck is this? Okay. What? He's walking through the desert, dinging his bell. Which sounds like a metaphor for masturbation. <laughs> you keep dinging your bell, buddy. What are we doing here? Uh, so that's inside the bell. What have we got inside this one? Mount Everest. And the child is to the right of it. Doing what? Walking. Climbing the staircase with a ladle. Getting water. Dousing the back of his head. I guess he's cooling his motherboard. Interesting. What about this one? What's this do? Trees. There's a little fucker setting up candles. Oh, he's just going from candle to candle. All right. What about the, what about the wheel? Okay. Can that be used as a gear? No. All right. That's definitely for something. What if I... No, it doesn't work. Fuck, there's so many areas to this that I'm like losing my mind right now. How do I get out of this? Oh, there we go. Okay. Jesus Christ. I don't think there's anything to do back here, so we may as well stay zoomed in. It's all about these three. I need to find something to put in there. Or I need a bottom part to this cog that turns. Have we seen that anywhere? Hang on, try the other books. I think I've looked at these books. There! Whoa, 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 whoa! Ooh! Alright. I think I'm smart. Wait, we've done something. The tops of the castles are turning the cogs. They've all they've got teeth. Amazing. Stop. Is that where I need it? Oh my god, we've done it. We've moved the child. That was a trip. That was a trip. <laughs> I feel bad my younger self didn't appreciate the witness. Oh, I mean, everyone has different tastes, but those tastes are also different at different stages of your life too, so I wouldn't hold it against yourself. They created this game like an anime studio using manga frames to construct their storyboard. Yeah, and they interact with each other in the trippiest ways. It's hard to um, wrap your head around. Like this sun thing turning into a giant cog along the castle walls is something I would not have thought of if I hadn't actually stumbled upon putting them together by accident. Can you imagine trying to play this when you were high? I don't know if you'd get anywhere or if you'd be a savant at it. Um, okay. We have him at a doorway, which means we could probably get him in this painting now. Wait. Like this. Through the door. Go in. Rip it out. I mean, come out. I'm a genius. Oh, there's the dragon. I don't know why it keeps showing up to spook me. The Fable of Golagoa. 
or Golgal, if you will. Oh, this is all changed. What have I? What's this turned into? What? Ooh. Whoa, dude. They've given me entirely new environments and I've got no idea what to do with them. What is this? Guy carrying flame. Alright. Imagine this game in VR. I don't even know how that would work, to be honest. Okay, that's not useful. That's not... This is the one right here. This is what we need. We need to turn this somehow. But which way around? That way. Which, the way my head just turned. One to the left. But how do we rotate? Actually, I know exactly how to do that. Wait. I know exactly how to do this. I remember seeing a shape that fits into that. And the shape was... In the candle, down here, horse cart wheel. Yes, you remembered it too, Tanner. Let's put the two together. Now he should rotate that once he moves the cart again. There it goes. That's a lot of rotation. I don't know where we are. Can I rip it out? How do we go? That is upside down. That's not the right spot. Try that again. I see shape people. <laughs> it was still funny though. By accident. Still not correct. Maybe one more. Cross your fingers. This is kind of random. Oh, something got moderated. That's weird. Famous quote from famous movies, sixth panel by M. Day. Why did it moderate that? Wait, that's... that's dumb. How do I unmoderate it? What if I post it? Well, I didn't get moderated, so I guess I get special privileges. I don't see anything in that sentence that can be misconstrued by a um, algorithm as offensive. You think it's the dot? Oh, you think the dot might be considering that some kind of um, some kind of URL? Yeah, okay, I get it now. That makes sense. Because I still have the URL thing on there. Oh shit, I forgot to stop the wheel. Oh! I was reading Twitch chat and I forgot to stop the wheel. Oh shit. Wait. Nah. Damn it. All right, which is the one? Nope, upside down again. Two more turns. The next one will put it sideways. Yep. Now the next one should put it upside down, which is our right way up. Is that it? Yep, we got it. Doorway, doorway, staircase. Um, here we go, ready? Walk him up. 
rip it back out. Different painting. And the Chinese dragon is still <laughs> ominously lurking in the background. Why is he tormenting this child? Fucking pedo dragon. Oh, you got something new. A lady painting a cantaloupe. She has nothing better to do. Uh, two women about to incinerate a fish and a tiny pony. I'll leave them to it. A man setting up candles. Oh, here we go. All right, I see, I see, I see. Now that we're in this painting, we need to connect these two up, but that one needs to be flipped so we can walk down these stairs. This one needs to be turned one to the right, clockwise. Stop doing that, that's annoying. Get out of there. What haven't we used yet, this one? So we got to use this staircase for something, so I'll leave that open, because that might be what we need here. That's useless, I think. This we haven't used yet. Oh, check it out. Look at the hole in the cloud. The hole in this cloud is the same shape as this, so if I do this, or this, As soon as he stops to do the water on his head, I think this uh, cog is going to bite the stairs. Amazing. So now that we can probably use to rotate this if this fits in that hole. Can I zoom out further? Yep. There's a ladle here with a really tiny chode penis on it. That's adorable. Here, 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 here. Fuck, wait. Fuck. Damn. Okay. Wait it out. Now do it. That should bite with the stairs. Here it comes. Holy shit. I need to look closely at those symbols though to see which one it needs to stop on. Oh fuck, I can't remember which one it is. Top one. Did we get it? Let's check. Okay, good. That was only one turn. So flip these two. There he goes. We're almost there. So I'll flip sides like this now. Zoom that out. Zoom that one in. More. Rock and roll, baby. Blue fruit acquired. What are you going to do with it, kid? Just stare at it? Maybe give it a lick? See what they, t see what they taste like? Come all this way. What are we... Can't actually manipulate his frame anymore. Something else. This has changed. The plate broke. Huh? Old man thinking of broken plate in a subway. <laughs> okay. I think Portal 2 is any game I really enjoyed and completed, though admittedly it got quite annoying with a bouncy slime. Yeah, I love both Portal games. I've played them both. They're great. Brilliant puzzle games. Great sense of humor. What is this? Child trapped in the center of tiny labyrinth. That's me. Uh, what's to the left? Can I bring him in here? Yes, I can. I guess that was chapter four. <laughs> I don't know how this game's deciding when it when a chapter starts and ends. I will be I will be streaming uh, Half-Life Alex at some point, which is essentially Half-Life 3. 
for all intents and purposes, for the time being. Um, okay, now he's thinking about the purple symbol, which means we're going for purple fruit. Purple fruit is a long purple train line. There it is. Is there a train map somewhere? There's a train station. Okay, what else can we find? Zoom out of the books. Anything new? More? He's an old man. This game's starting to make me a little sad. I'm getting the uh, I'm getting the gist here that this kid has spent his entire life searching this prophecy, looking for the fruit and researching this prophecy till he was an old man through a war even. Okay. Can I go back in? He's awake now. Is there anything I can actually do with this? Wait, zoom out. Rip the window off. No, that doesn't work. I'll leave that be for now. What about this one? I hate my anal beads and my bell. I'd rather be falling to my death. No, wait, I changed my mind. I want to go back to putting things on my ass. That was only about six seconds worth of depression, and we're back to um, anal play. Let's just leave him to it. Can I... Oh, calendar. Skello hands with lots of rings. It's a shame they went corporate and abandoned games. Alex is a sad reminder of what they're capable of. They'll still make games, it's just... They're really pedantic, so they take a long time to actually decide on what game they want to make, and then actually make it. What are we doing with this? Oh. Sonic Ring. But I can see things through. What are we doing with a Sonic Ring? Can I put Old Man in it? We've made an Old Man coin! <laughs> cool. And the Old Man coin can be overlaid. I think we're going to use this money to pay for something. What about this? That oh, doesn't do anything. I need more things to interact with. What about this? Uh, can I tear this away? Yes, okay, here we go. Can I put the money in the sign? Nope. Oh wait, this, okay. By ripping the symbol out of the train sign, I've actually created a panel that is the location where the train sign is. Wrap your head around that shit. What the fuck are we doing now? Hedge? The, oh my god. Oh, there's a purple symbol doorway. The fruit might be in there. Alright, cool. <laughs> Chinese New Year is still lurking in the background. There's the purple fruit. Okay. We need to get the kid to the purple symbol tower in the doorway and up here. That's the goal. We actually have a goal. We also have a ladder. That might come in handy later. Remember that? I have an idea. That looks like it'll match up with the... Never mind. I was gonna go for that piece of paper, but I think they're fucking with me. What does child want to do? Get on train? Can't get in. Money in here. Oh, that's why I made the coin. Okay. Genius. We're smart cookies. <clears throat> We're smart cookies up in. What is that paper doing? Oh, there it goes. I needed that. I really did. 
I wanted to put it in this circle. They kind of fucked me with that. But we do have a train station map. And the kid's now on that train. So I guess we need to get that train to... Here. How the feck do we do that? I think we're going to keep circling this until we find a way to switch this map up. Somehow. Uh, something to do with the octopus horse. Thinking about broken stone masonry. Alright. Can I put the broken horse in this? No. Oh, wait. This is not a ladder. This is a train track. I see you, game. How do we... Put the train tracks together. Okay, I, I'm sussing this. I could, I could see what they want me to do. I just don't know how to do it yet. Like that? Okay, that's going to be part of the solution later. We're just not there. We're, he we're ahead of the game. That's also probably ahead of the game. We need to focus on this part. Okay, leave this area. There must be something else. This? Can we do something with this? Yes, we can. Wait, fuck. Wait till the train is on this track. Then we zoom it in. Let him drive onto the green panel. Rip it back off. Alright, he's, he's gone. What have I done? Success. Now we just wait, I guess? For him to get to the purple tower? I think? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Hi, genie. <sighs> okay. I've made some kind of progress, but we've lost the train. I need to find the purple train station again. I think we'll... Oh, there it is. That wasn't that far away. We can now get the child back. There's my boy. With his fruit bowl. <laughs> He's all about that fruit bowl. Well, where did he go? There he is. Okay, why is he here? Nope, he's left again. <sighs> Never have kids. Wait, what did he say? What is this? Why are you thinking of this? Can I rip this off? Yes, I can. Okay, wait. This is a quilt. Uh, but to what purpose is this quilt? Blue hand I can zoom in on. Purple hand I can zoom in on. Red hand. I have directional hands that I can manipulate. That is usable for something. There's hands here with scissors, but I don't know if that's relevant. Can I make the child think about this? No? Can I make him think about scissors? That doesn't quite fit. It's nearly 12 in Australia. Oh, it's nearly 12 for you, Sham. It is uh, 12.45 for me. So I've already reached my 12. <laughs> Irresponsible adults. <laughs> yeah. Don't you mean man-children? Hang on, let me get the biscuits. This is definitely a snacking game. This is 100% a game you play while snacking. Ah, my knee. 
I said my knee, not money, in case you were wondering. Although, I think the optimum snack for this game would probably be edibles. Oh, Biscoff. Even better, Jenna. Thank you. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Something, something, I know the tune, but not the words. Hmm. <laughs> oh, money. Fuck, capitalism. So disgusting. Dick to the lakes and rivers. <laughs> Hang on, let me just claim the ten of things. There we go. Back to this nonsense. Oh, and hydrate. Okay. Here's what I think they want me to do. He's got a think he's got a speech bubble, right? If I make him think about hand pointing left, maybe he'll walk left. Zoom out. Child is walking left. I'm a genius. You found a video for Vampire Survivors explaining why it's a new genre? What genre would that be? I thought it was just a twin stick shooter, but without the shoot button. Like, that part's automated. That's pretty much the only difference, right? Okay, so telling him to walk this way just makes him look at this, but that doesn't achieve anything. So what if we make him walk the opposite way? By ripping that out again, zooming out, walking to the right... That worked. He's going to the right. He walked to the right and then he came back. Fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? What am I doing, man? Oh, I didn't know I could go in here. Wait. There's a tiny little door underneath the thing he's looking at. Can I rip that out? No. Nope. Alright. Let's paste it in. The genre is bullet heaven. So what defines a bullet heaven? Is it um, automated bullet combat? So all you have to worry about is um, uh, harvesting currency and upgrading the, um, the bullet bullshit to make it even more formidable. I can see why they call it that actually. Yeah, because um, Bullet Hell is about you being weak and doing your damnedest to um, stay alive in a Bullet Hell, right? And you don't get any better than that. So Bullet Heaven would be the opposite, where it's about you get getting more powerful and spraying bullets at everything else. You heard Vampire Survivors isn't the first of its kind. Yeah, that's pretty much what Tanky just said as well wasn't the first notable indie game to be called that. So I guess it's... I mean, that's pretty typical, though, of the games industry. Like, there will be lesser-known games that dip their toes and kind of slowly invent a genre, and then there will be some, like, big game that, um, that blows it up and becomes known as the first. Like, Castlevania and Metroidvania are the... T Sorry, Metroidvania. Castlevania and Metroid are the two games that are known as inventing the metroidvania genre which is why they formed the two names together but i'm pretty sure there were lesser known games before that that had a similar level structure it just took nintendo's two big flagship franchise titles to like make them popular so that's what it got named for oh same deal with sword art online well there you go let me just think about this real quick. What is through here again? 
There's that ladder that you can turn into a train track. There's a red ladder that I can turn into a train track. Just really itty bitty. I didn't notice that before. Good catch. There's the purple fruit. Okay, so just out of curiosity, what happens if we rip the quilt out of his thought panel and switch him to up? What happens if I say go up? He looks up. Fuck all. Well, this is weird. Hang on. Um... Think. A little bit stumped here. Can I replace this mural? Or any of these murals. Why can't I go to the right? I can make him walk to the right, but I, I can't see what's over there. The game won't let me. Look, there he goes. And then he, then he comes back. Weird. Okay, there's something to do with this. Can I put anything in this circle, maybe? Or, is there a way to connect this shrubbery to something? Nope. Definitely gotta do something here. Okay. Or here. Can I... You know, I'd never, until today, I'd never heard the, um, the genre name, uh, Isekai, if that's how you say it. He started a war. <laughs> oh, wait! Oh, these, these panels actually match up. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, I'm onto something. So, if I can get the kid into this panel, I could walk him through this door. Which means I need to get him to this one first. Or this one. How? Do these match up? Oh! There, okay. I, I didn't realize that these actually synced up perfectly. So now, if I rip this out, zoom it out, make him think about going left, zoom back out, we should be able to get him to the next panel. Yep, look at that for a bit while I think about scissors. Great. Good job. Why are you thinking about this? Huh? Oh, more more arrows. Ah, uh, fuck. Are 
Okay, if I zoom in on the tiny door down here... Match this up with that hand. Zoom it out. Switch these two. There you go. Those two match up as well. We got him to the tiny door. And he's gone. We've lost the child again. <laughs> it's 8pm. Do you know where your child is? I do not. He might be in here somewhere. Although I don't see him. Has anyone seen my baby boy? This isn't good. <laughs> we... Oh no, there he is. He's just really tiny. Holy shit. Okay. Okay, he's too small for the door. We gotta... We gotta grow him somehow. We need to feed him a lot of protein. He's thinking about constellations. Why are you doing that? Rip that out. Oh, wow. That's that's a trip. What year is this? The 1920s? It actually takes place in multiple time periods, because sometimes when you're zooming in and out of panels and fucking around with the perspective, you find your way into scenarios where he's older or younger, but he's always researching and chasing the same Chinese dragon prophecy. We've seen him as an old man. We've seen him as an adult in a wheelchair. We've seen him as a teenager during the war, getting injured. There's all kinds of storytelling going on that is not really told directly. It's more uh, uh, diegetic storytelling. What would you call it? It's hard to say. I've seen burning buildings and I've seen uh, and heard war stuff and him in a soldier uniform, but it's quite vague because there's no dialogue or text. You're just it's all visual art by Jason Roberts. What am I looking for in this bedroom? A horse with a tree trunk head growing into soldiers. And a water sprite. It's pretty funky. Wait, we can go into this one. She's pointing up. He's pointing left. She's pointing right. It's more pointing. Um, we need him to go where? Up. Let's go up. Think about that. Zoom it out with the ladder. Can you climb that? What have I done? He's trapped. Shit. Oh, wait. Okay, wait. If I flip this, he can climb back down. Oh, genius. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. Rip that out. Move it to here. Zoom in on the up. Capture it. Zoom back out. Put it here. Go up. Okay, now when he climbs back down, he's going to enter this panel. But now he's going to be on the actual train map, climbing on the train tracks. We need a yellow. We need yellow tracks. There. Swap them again. I think we just enlarged him. We've embiggened. What a f what an ingenious way to um, enlarge a child. I like making children big. <laughs> Wait, where did he go? We got it. We got the purple fruit. That's four fruit down, one to go. One more color left. What are we missing? Or oh, was that the last one? Uh, 
Um, oh shit, now what? Oh, think about the bowl of fruit thing. There you go. Does that do something? Fuck yeah. We've collected the Dragon Balls. That's all of them. And they've turned evil. <laughs> what have we done? We've summoned the wrath of the Gora Goragal, I guess. Is that meant to be the Goragal? Goragal? Fell asleep. Doesn't care for me. I am but the child. Drop to your knees, child. Only the penitent man may pass. Only the penitent man may pass. I have been cursed. I have been cursed by the... The curse of the one-eyed Chinese Goragao, I guess. Is that what happened? Is this how I got injured? And in the wheelchair? I fell off the tower after the dragon looked at me? 100% is. The time skipped again. Chinese Dragon Balls. What the fuck is this shit? It's a surrealist um, puzzle game created with a particular artist's uh, work. They took the surrealist art of Jason Roberts and turned it into a perspective shifting puzzle game, which is currently baking my noodle. But I think we're getting there. We're making it through. There's the war again. Where are we going with this? Okay. We're traveling through time. Modern times. We're an old man. We're thinking of jumping to our deaths because the Dragon Ball thing didn't work out. We never defeated the Golagao. Golagao? No. Goragao, sorry. Why can I zoom in on these? I don't see nothing. Oh, I can... I can rip them all out. Holy shit, what is this going to amount to? Rip that one out. Old man Gorogao child thinks about rubble. Oh my god, what are we doing? It's rhetorical. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Uh, let's move it here and see if we can capture this. No. Nope. What if we capture that? No. Okay. That doesn't work either. Something here must be relevant to our interests. But what? Oh, here we go. I can zoom into that. Now if I capture this poster in a frame... Nope, that's not working either. I can just see everything from here. What the fuck, man? Can I go to this? Holy shit. This game, is just, this game has just gone completely bonkers right now. Wait. Think about the purple symbol. That fits. Why are we thinking about that? Zoom in. Capture this in the frame. What did that do? Oh, okay. Wait. Brainstorm. I see what we're doing. We collected the five spheres of Goragao, and now we're, after they were destroyed after being looked at by the dragon's eye, we're trying to reactivate them, I think. So if I go into each one, I'm going to enter a different part of his life, and I have to figure out how to find the symbol. Oh, there we go. That's weird. There's a black hole. 
But we have a star. Can I think about the star? No? I can go outside. There's the moth from earlier. He's still kicking about. Can I connect this up? Yes, I can. That's pretty dope. So this frame I need to keep on... Oh, okay. The moth flew The moth flew to um, Alpha Centauri and incinerated itself. Impressive! Ground control to ambitious moth. Why did you kill yourself, you stupid toss? Okay, the moth did create for us the yellow ball. Which I need to capture in a medium frame before I can capture it in a large frame. There. In his thought bubble. Now that it's in the thought bubble, we can zoom in on the thought bubble and capture it in a large frame. There we go. Two balls down. How about this one? Rip the frame off. We're post-war. Was thinking about darkness and a burnt apple in a painting. Ah, the layers of reality are wrinkling my brain. What's in here? Nothing. Younger child reading. Thinking about the dragon. Oh, this is back when he was younger when he first saw the dragon and started doing the research. The Chinese luck dragon. There's the red one. Capture that in thought, zoom it in, capture it in the frame, smashed it, that one was easy. I want to smash my phone into tiny pieces so bad right now. <laughs> What's the matter, Genie? You're just tripping balls at how this is played, because it's it's kind of a it's kind of a mind fuck. I'm a bit used to how it's Manipulated though, with the zooming and the panel shifting. Oh, your phone keeps fucking up. Is it still doing that thing where it closes apps? Like out of the stream and shit? Alright. I think you need a new phone soon. Alright, what's this one? Every- this is actually- these, bl these black spheres are reconnecting with parts of his life where he was in despair, the lowest parts of his life. Because in every single one, his thought bubble is about darkness, but then I rip it out, and I rediscover the love for searching for each one of these elements of the dragon. What am I doing here? What the fuck? Okay, this one's a bit odd, wait. find a way to rotate these cogs. There's more than five elements? Oh, it really depends on the, the lore that you're speaking of. Is there nowhere else I can go in this one? Oh, holy shit! Okay, I ripped the sun out of that cog. That's some progress. Always walking. Can capture things in the circle. Can I recapture him while he walks? Yep, there we go. Cogs are working out. Rip it out now. Stop him. Okay, now that should have turned it just enough. What do I do with this sun child? To zoom this back out, but it's not letting me. Okay, there. Capture it before he turns it again. Got it. Have to be quick. In Chinese lore, it's more than five. 
It's five, but this game uses two of the wrong ones. I mean, I'm I call the dragon Chinese because it looks like a um, a Chinese parade dragon, like a one of those Chinese New Year's parade dragons. But I have no fucking idea what nationality it's supposed to be. I need to rotate these cocks. I definitely didn't say cocks. If I was a boss in Dark Souls, I'd throw Viscop as a flyer and a magic Udi. I mean, that's random, but okay, I agree with you. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Right, one left. Tear that out. Despair. After the war, we're poor and destitute. And the despair amounts to what? A ripped up tapestry. Oh my god, it's recursive. Like a fractal. Oh my god, it's fractal all the way. Actually, that one was hella easy. Whoa, okay. That one was just tripping you out with the fractal, but there wasn't really a puzzle there. We've done it. We've reconstituted the ball. They're Dragon Balls. In the bowl. What does that mean? I think I've recreated the sun. Oh no, I've summoned the Gol Golgao. Gorogao. Hello, little child. I see you have found my balls. Would you please stop playing with my balls? I'm a dragon and it makes me very upset. Zoom into my eye. I will hypnotize you. Oh fuck, that is actually quite hypnotic. Why have we done this? Oh fuck, it's finished. <laughs> I'm a genius. I have solved the uh, the mystery of the Golagao. Why do I keep calling it a Golagao? Gorogao. Well, I've got some chunky achievements there just for completing chapters. Cool. Okay, so that was about a two-hour game. That's that's not too bad. I did talk a lot of shit and fuck around a bit before I started playing at the start of the stream, so... I'd say that took me slightly under two hours. Going by the session timer. There's more achievements. Oh, there are a couple more, but I'm not going to be getting all the achievements for this game. Um... The last two are too frustrating. So... I'm scrubbing them. It's very mysterious about what it, uh, the original 2012 demo is now available from the chapter select menu. Oh, cool. That is an achievement. We will play that. And I have a feeling that's going to be quite short. Well, there's the chapters. Prologue, red fruit, green fruit, yellow fruit, blue fruit, purple fruit, credits. Annapurna doesn't publish games for me. Annapurna, I think, would be maybe right near the top of my favorite game publisher. I absolutely love most of the games they make. I should probably look up um, someone's theory about the story. Because it's very obtuse, but I bet there's like a lot to dissect in there. Why haven't you played Stray? Oh, because I don't have a PS5. Um, I've yet to be able to find a PS5. But I will get one one day. It's also on PC. Yeah, but I want to play it on PS5. Um, My plan when I got a PS5 was to play Stray, Shifu, and... Um, Horizon. Oh, and catch up on the Spider-Mans as well. Patrick's Parabox. I hadn't heard of that one. 
And God of War, yeah, sure. Oh yeah, I did. I did see. I completely forgot. I saw an article saying that, but I literally just completely forgot about that. <laughs> That's true. No, but like that was only announced recently. So up until now, I've always been planning to play it on PS5 because I thought it was going to remain an exclusive. But that's a good point. So I might play Sufu on Game Pass instead. So when I get my PS5, it'll be Stray. Catch up on the Spider-Mans. Uh, catch up on the Horizons. And then like Sham said, probably the new God of War as well. Sifu's a roguelike. Oh, I know. I know all about Sifu. I've seen the video reviews. I've seen some uh, streaming of it. It's all good. At least it's a different kind of roguelike. The problem with the roguelikes is a lot of them are the same. Um, A lot of them are that same 2D side-scrolling platformer action game. Shit. Not shit, but you like stuff. You can play God of War on PS4. Yeah, but why would you if you can play it on PS5? I'm a technology whore. If I know it's on something more powerful than what I've got, I'm not going to touch it until I get the um, the juice. That's why Sham triggered me the other day when he mentioned that he was playing um, Bright Memory on a Switch. My technology whore inside of me, like, freaked out when I heard that. Sifu and Hades are the only ones for me. You mean is, as far as roguelikes are concerned? The only roguelikes you've ever liked? Castlevania. Well, that's Castlevania is not a roguelike. That's a Metroidvania. But, you know, still cool. PS4 God of War Ragnarok wasn't bad. Yeah, but I can't stomach playing things um, on, a, on lesser hardware if I know that I can get it on something better. It really bothers me. It's crossing over with one. I've never heard anyone ever say that about Castlevania. I feel like there's people that would fight you on that one. You don't mind graphics as long as the frame rate doesn't dip to claymation levels? You know, I'm actually... I'm not... I'm um, not the kind of person that stresses too much about frame rate. Like, I know there's a lot of, like, technolo technology whore, like, graphics whore type people out there that they always fucking go on about frame rate and shit, but I honestly don't see the difference half the time. Like, the frame rate can be kind of a little rough, and I just, like, don't even give a shit. <laughs> as long as it looks pretty. I'm not a number crunch I'm not a number counter when it comes to things like frames and like PC hardware master race bullshit. But I do I do like to at least have the best possible machine. I don't PC master race it usually. But in the case of things like PS4 versus PS5, like if I know it's on PS5 and have better resolution textures and loading screens, then I'm not gonna do I'm never gonna play PS4. The only time in my life I used to PC Master Race a little bit was during the Xbox One and PS2 era. Because the Xbox One and the PS2, not the Xbox One, like the first Xbox, the original. Fuck, they made it hard. The naming scheme makes it hard to talk about. Um, during that era, those consoles hadn't caught up with mid-range PCs yet. So when you played a game on a PS2 or an Xbox and compared it to the exact same PC version, there was actually a huge difference. Me and a friend of mine, just out of curiosity, we both had copies of Doom 3. One on Xbox and one on PC. And we actually played them side by side. The computer next to the uh, console. And you'd be shocked at how different they were. Like, every single room and corridor, there was some major, like, difference. Like, the first lobby of the game, when you get off the train, um, you walk down the very first corridor, and on the PC version, there's all this, like, HDR lighting of different colors. One of the walls is a big glass wall where you can see the reception on the side that's, like, typing away and talks to you. And there's a doorway on the right that goes into a room that's, like, a lounge that has an arcade machine where you can actually play the arcade game. On the Xbox version, 
it's a concrete corridor with just two stone walls and nothing else. Just all that stuff is gone. You just walk straight through. And there's like no... It's just one type of basic lighting. No dynamic shadows, no set dressing. We were like, wow, they really had to like simplify the game a lot to make it fit on the old school consoles. But by the time it got to 360 and um, PS3, that's the very first generation where they kind of reached on the cusp of mid-range PC quality. That's when it really stopped mattering. Because the games were exactly the same. They just were slightly lower res than like what PC was capable of. But it was close enough that you didn't need to actually give a shit anymore. The bumpers sucked ass in the D-pad. The first Xbox controller was a bit chunky. People used to call it the potato. I didn't mind it though, because I've got like straight white male hands. So they fit around the potato pretty well. Sorry, I'm just currently eating the flavoring at the bottom of a chip packet. I'm being gross. Oh, ever since the Xbox 360, the Xbox controller became my favorite console controller. I never used to mind the PS2 and PS1 controllers. But by the time the 360 came out with the PS3, the PlayStation controller stayed the same. And the Xbox controller became the most comfortable controller I'd ever used. So I, di I didn't like the PlayStation controller as much after that. It felt fine when you first picked it up, but longer gaming sessions, you really start to feel that weird cramped shape that it has. Whereas um, the Xbox One really felt like it fit the mold of your palms. The DualSense looks like a definite improvement from what I've seen. The funny thing is, is that it kind of, it kind of copied the Xbox a little bit. Like, it's like they took a PlayStation controller and they fattened it up, they thickened it up into the palms in a very similar shape to what the Xbox is, uh, one has always been. So it's almost like they found the middle ground between the old con uh, PlayStation controller and mimicking some of the shape of how an Xbox controller was, and then went even further with the like the whole DualSense um, technology. Them uh, super those superior vibrators that they chucked in there. doesn't have adaptive triggers and target vibration. I'm not too bothered by that though. Like everyone goes nuts about the haptic shit on that dual sense, and I think it's impressive, but I don't really personally care that much. Like I find that too much immersion features in a controller actually unimmerses me from the game because I keep on looking at and thinking about the controller in my hands and how cool it is that it matches um, the feel of some things that are happening. But then I'm like out of the game thinking about the technology. Like it's, it kind of um, annoys me a little bit. It's impressive. I am impressed by it, but I don't actually prefer it. It's more of a novelty. Like I liked it when I was trying it on someone else's console. But then I was like, if I was like playing a whole bunch of games on this and like longer games for ages, after a while I'd be just like, can I turn this off now? Like, I'm done getting hard from the fucking novelty of what this thing can do. I just want to like ignore the controller now and disappear into the game and start feeling like I'm the character. Oh, that's good. You can turn it off. You prefer mouse and keyboard over controller? I'm both. Like back when I was a child, I had like the Nintendo the SNES and the Sega Mega Drive and the Sega Master System or Genesis, whatever country you're in. But I also had a PC that I played Warcraft and Dune and Doom on and stuff like that. So I've always had consoles and PCs. So I've never preferred keyboard, mouse or console over each other. It depends on the genre. Like, if, um, obviously if I'm playing a real-time strategy, or any kind of tactical stuff. Uh, mouse is better because you're moving a cursor around, giving orders to things. 
um, if you're playing a third person action game, anything third person really, um, con uh, console control is better. Racing game, console control is better. Uh, first person shooter, it's kind of 50 50, but you can, uh, you can be more efficient with a mouse and keyboard in an FPS. But I don't really care about gaming skill that much, so I'm perfectly happy playing a first-person shooter with a controller, just for comfort's sake. Because I'm not counting fucking uh, KD ratios or anything like that. We aren't acknowledging the worst. You better not say connect, because I love I love the connect. <laughs> I really enjoyed the uh, the connect when that was a thing. The switch control is the switch controller meant to be bad? Is that what people say? I like I'm out of the loop with what people think about the Switch hardware. Oh, the only thing people ever talk about when it comes to Switch is just the quality of the first part first party Nintendo games and that's it. You buy a Switch to play Zelda and Mario and Metroid and, and you know the usual suspects, Kirby. You buy it for Kirby. But no one really talks about anything else. They don't talk about graphics, they don't talk about the controller from what I've seen. Oh, they flip A and B, don't they? A and B is flipped from what, um, like an Xbox controller has. A tiny ass thumbsticks make first person shooters so hard to play. But the thing is, like, the Switch is not really about multi platform gaming. Like, I wouldn't play anything on a Switch that is available on a PlayStation or an Xbox or a PC. The Switch, to me, like every Nintendo console, is all about first party. Every Nintendo console I've owned, it's basically just a machine for first party Nintendo games like Zelda, Mario, Kirby, Metroid, um, Pikmin. Gotta throw Pikmin in there. Mario Kart and fucking Ma uh, Smash Brothers, all that type of stuff. Throw them in there. I have noticed that Switch has got a shitload of third-party games, very similar to what the other consoles do, and also things like Steam. And I'm a little bit shocked, because Nintendo has always been, like, really anal about their stamp of quality, their stamp of approval when it comes to quality. So they don't just let anything on their consoles, but the Switch has been acting like it has been letting just anything on there. Because I've been seeing people talk about some real trash third-party stuff. Like that one really weird witch game where you're like anime witches riding on broomsticks that is absolute like 0 0.5 out of 10 reviewed kind of bullshit. That was like a Steam game. It's weird that Nintendo have gone that way. Like they've just suddenly out of nowhere gotten a lot greedier. Fuck knows why that happened. And yeah, that is exactly what Nintendo does. Doesn't matter how long a game's been out, if it's a Nintendo first party, it's always full price. Although someone like JB Hi-Fi will occasionally sneak like a $5 off thing in there. Like you'll go in and be like, oh wow, it's $75, not 80. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. What a saving. But it's because Nintendo know that you're going to fork out because that's why you own a Nintendo machine. It's for those games, which is why they always cost an arm and a leg. Man, I really want to play that Kirby game that's on Switch. You know the one where you can turn in, you can swallow a car and then become Car Kirby. The one where he can like deep throat massive shit and turn into um very large objects. The deep throat Kirby game, we'll call it that. They need a better online system for Nintendo and a better like digital store kind of, yeah. Carby? Yeah, there. There you go. The notorious deep-throating Carby. Okay, let's just quickly have a look at what other achievements there are here. Play the demo from 2012. 
Complete the game in under 30 minutes. Complete the game in under 500 moves. So fuck those last two. Because, um... There's no way I'm going to remember all the steps in that and exactly how to pull them off perfectly to do it that quickly and to do it under 500. That is absurd. So I'll do the demo one, but that's it. Is that it here? Play the original 2012 demo. This will erase your current progress. Yeah, go for it. Annapurna Interactive presents a buried signal game. Gorogal. The story of a child and his Chinese dragon. His child led a miserable life, and what did it lead to? Being tormented by a Chinese parade dragon. Great. Huh? That dragon shouldn't be there. Is it hats? Is it bones? Is it fish? Is it string? Is it coral? Is it turnips? Is it paw prints? <gasps> his dragon. Oh, I'm supposed to do something. Whoops. Yes, bowl of fruit. This is about the same as the main game so far. Cool. Think about that for a little bit. Now make it your whole life's mission. You absolute freak. It's literally a speedrunner achievement. Yeah. <laughs> so, fuck that. Don't want to go to work. I'm surprised you're still having to go to work. Just um. Oh, you did say that the only th the only thing that Christmas means to you is that you get that day off work, which means they have you working every other day. This seems the same so far. But it's on a Sunday, so no holiday off. That's fucked up. That's actually really fucked up. That they do that to you. Wait, what am I doing? The graphics are a little bit shonkier. Actually. So this must be the demo. What am I doing? This? There, there we go. I'm out of the tower, and I have my blue bowl. Now to collect Dragon Balls in it. Do that. Yeah, have a, have a sit real quick. I'm gonna suss out whatever this is. Nope, that's nothing. Zoom out. Uh, zoom in. Zoom in again. We have Apple. We have Bowl. Position Bowl under Apple. That links up. Zoom out. Poorly drawn crow. There's my boy. Nailed it. Cool. Huh? How did I acquire Apple? It's like there's some unseen deity-like force that's moving the paddles of my life around, helping me achieve my goals. But that can't be true. Can it? Oh, there's that fucker dragon again. What a tosser. What am I doing with this child's life? Hang on. Zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom in. Go in here. Rip that back off. This is different. There wasn't crank wheels here before in the main game. Painting is now useless. This painting might actually be useful. What about here? Okay, I don't. This, I don't know. Nope, what's over here? Huh? Oh, yeah. Come out here. Go where that sign is pointing. Good boy. 
Yeah, he stops and thinks about shit for so long. He's not a quick study. Special needs child with his blue ball. Oh, he's left. That's been drawn over. Oh, someone's covered this. So I need to get him in this somehow. Can I rip it out? Yes, I can. Okay. Now cover that. That doesn't work. Oh, fuck me in the ass. What am I... Here we go. There's something new. Um... Oh, Sonic Ring. I need to capture something in the Sonic Ring, probably. If I had to guess. Oh, window? On the side? No. Okay, what the fuck? Okay, this... This window is all I can do in this top panel. Why can't I put that over that? It's not quite lined up correctly. There must be something else in this screen that I didn't see. What about this? little stumped. <laughs> Can I do something here? Move it around. Can I frame that with something like the sign? No. Oh, I just smashed that door on the wall and he can go in. Okay. I was thinking of everything but the most obvious solution. Now where did he go? There's the two lesbians sharing an apple. I remember that from the main game as well. They're just using all these puzzle elements differently in the demo. Isn't this typical of a straight white male behavior? To steal the only fruit owned by the two lesbians? The LGBTQ can't have nothing, man. There's always a, there's always a straight white male there to cramp on their style. Got to go, you're horny again? <laughs> hey, it's a classy statue. You're not supposed to be sexualizing it. The statue is depicting two women in love providing for each other. It's about family. They probably will scissor later on once they've they're got their fill of apples, but as far as the statue uh, depiction is concerned, we're supposed to be thinking familial. Um, that dragon eye is looking around and freaking me out. But I can use it to turn the apple green, yes. And we've robbed them. We've robbed the lesbians. This child is not an ally. He's not an ally at all. Disgusting. Where did he go? With his ill-gotten gains. His forbidden fruit. As it were. I want all five Dragon Balls, but I only have one. The lesbian apple. Unfortunately, this is just a demo. Oh, I can rip it out. Cool. It's a juggler. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, I guess this panel is probably useful for something. You said lesbians and something else popped into your head? What do you mean something else popped into your head? It's lesbians. Lesbians is what popped into your head. There's a giant squid. Another visual metaphor for lesbianism. No, wait. A giant tentacle squid wrapping its tentacles around a phallic building. I think that's a straight metaphor. 
That squid's a whore. Um, this is probably useful for something. Can that frame something? What about the ring? No. What about the child? No. What about the wind? No. This frame has been useful for a while here. <laughs> I just saw the emoji. <laughs> you meant something other than the imagery in this game? Just straight old lesbian porn hub. Just don't look at it on the bus on the way to work. You might get arrested for in improper conduct. What the fuck are we trying to achieve now? What am I doing with this child? I can't do anything with that one. I can do something with the ring. I can do this squid or that. I'm gonna. This is the one that actually looks like it might be something. So I'm gonna leave it there. Oh, we put the child in the carriage. Okay. Now the window is broken, so I can go inside that. Pretty straightforward so far. What is this? A clap? A clamp? The fuck? No. No. Something else? Oh! Oh! Hey! Ooh! Ooh! Those two line up. That yellow wooden board was a dead giveaway. What does it show when you move to it to a new panel? It's... That's the thing with this game. Like, you have to fiddle with it to figure out what the mechanics are, because the mechanics shift and change, but they only stay a certain kinds of things. Sometimes you can zoom in or zoom out, revealing new scenes. Sometimes you can move a panel, sometimes, you can always move panels around, but sometimes they sync up if you find the right scenes that stick together, and that makes something happen. Sometimes they have holes in them, or they're a single element that can actually be overlaid with other images, so the overlay creates a new scenario. That's like the three main mechanics. Um, but you do have to move things around. Like sometimes when you move a frame, like you see with what you saw with the dragon panel, that one panel shows different images across all four panels. It's like looking at one giant picture through like a single window. I'm like Uma Thurman in Kill Bill, in the van trying to move her toe. Oh, is that you trying to go to work? <laughs> Man, the scene before that is pretty fucked up. That was a that was a that was a full on you know the whole um the nurse guy I'm Buck and I like to fuck and then they reveal that like he's been selling her comatose body for the last couple of years to like truckers and stuff. Ugh. Like I'm not a female, so I can't relate to it in a direct way like that. But even I cringed. I was like, Jesus Lord. The most disgusting shot in the entire movie is the close up of the um. The bottle of Vaseline with all the pubes on it. Um, that shot always makes me my skin crawl. Okay, so this panel I can't do anything with it yet. I have to leave the child out of it for now. But what have I achieved with the apple thing? Oh, I can rip the apple out of the plate. And then zoom the apple out. And we have a new scene. Okay. What about the plate scene? What does that do now? Kill Bill's great. I showed you my Kill Bill sword, right? Um, my Hitori Hanzo. I showed someone on the stream a little while back. In case you were there on that stream and can't remember. That. That's the replica of the Hattori Hanzo 
that Uma Thurman uses in the movie. I've only ever pulled that out and showed someone on stream one time, so I can't remember who was in the uh, the chat when I did that. Whoop. Okay. Oh, Gogo Yabari was cute. You were there, Tenor? Oh, okay. So you were in the chat. Gogo Yabari doesn't get to hang around for very long, though. She gets a couple of scenes hanging out next to Lucy Liu. And then her big scene is pretty much just leads up to her death. Where she takes the, um, the nail on the table leg through the head. That was a damn shame. But she was a bit of a psycho. Yeah, the schoolgirl. The schoolgirl with the... I don't know what the weapon's called, but she had the ball on the chain. Yeah. And she swings it around and then kicks it out with her leg into Thurman's chest. That was a sick move. Oh, how about this? Can we capture the apple in the circle? Fuck no, we can't. Alright. I think we're done with this scene. There must be something else in here. Or is there? Because I can't do anything with the apple. Oh, wait. These actually connect together. I didn't even notice that. Okay. We just traveled across and grabbed that off the tree. Good. Now if I... Flip it. No. Oh, no, we can zoom in. What is this? Uh, what it... Oh, I get it. Wait. These connect. That makes a tower. So he can climb down. Oh, now what? Uh, zoom out. There's the dragon! Oh, I got your dragon balls. You just wait. I got you by the dragon balls. Are we still trapped in this building? Yep, we can't get out of this yet. Oh, hello. Six winged angel. Cool statue. I've got a question for you guys about the first kill bill. Wait, train coming. Never mind, it stopped. What did you guys think about the part where it goes black and white? Because I know it was done for censorship, but I saw a normal colored version. It almost changes the tone of the giant fight scene completely. I mean, it's fine. Like, it's kind of cool in black and white, so I don't really feel like I'm missing anything by not seeing it in color. The movie's called Battle Royale. Yeah, I've got that. I've got Battle Royale on Blu-ray, actually, on my shelf. I also have, I've also got the Blu-ray of um, Battle Royale 2, which is not as good. Okay, I think we need to get the kid to the train somehow. Oh, like this. Turn that window on the tower into a doorway. Perfect. I didn't know that it was the same actress. No, that's news to me. I did not put those that two and two together. I saw Battle Royale the first time long before I ever saw Kill Bill, though. So by the time I saw her in Kill Bill, I didn't make the connection at all. Oh, we need a coin. We need a coin for the train. Which means we need to turn this ring into a coin by putting something in the middle of it. Okay, shit. This isn't working. How are we gonna do this? Oh, wait, the picture of the coin on the... the thing? Can I steal that? If I could, only I could zoom in closer. Can I just use it in ring mode? No, I 
can't. Oh, I have another scene. Wait, here we go. I didn't peel that layer off. That guy. Capture his head. Makes coin. Zoom into coin slot. Drop that in. Perfect. We're so smart. Oh, that was it. That was the demo. So the demo was about... Two... Two and a half of the five fruits with much more basic versions of the puzzles for those areas. That's no, alright. I guess, like, if it was 2012, which was so long ago, I'm guessing that was his proof of concept that he probably made in his own uh, spare time in order to get funding to um, flesh it out into a full game. Gladly the random dude with the same face as a coin. Yeah, well, there you go. Alright, so... That's every achievement except for the speedrun achievements. Those two. Uh, so fuck that. That's no fun. I could imagine that taking me, like, days of playing the game over and over again, trying to master doing it in, like, only the smallest amount of moves and having to remember every single step. That is a pain. And will not be happening on this stream. That's for damn sure. Cool. You wasted time talking when you could have wasted time cooking breakfast, Sammies? Yeah, see? You're on Twitch talking shit about Kill Bill when you could be um, feeding the Tum Tum. You cannot. I did read a little bit about the achievement, and a lot of people were complaining that it's a very unfair achievement. Because the th complete the game in 30 minutes achievement apparently requires such pinpoint precision, no wasted moves, as fast as you can, knowing when the animations end so you can click immediately on the next thing. And some people even suggest that you, you, um, you cheese it slightly by using pause spamming. So you constantly use the escape button to to pause it, um, to basically take breaks, double check next moves, and then get the mouse. Like literally, this is one of the suggestions I heard to be, to be able to make 30 minutes possible. They said, right before the animation of the panels moving is finished, uh, but right before it finishes the animation, you hit escape to pause the game, go to the menu, you move the mouse to the spot on the screen where you know the next hotspot's going to be that you have to click on, and then you unpause it and click immediately. That's literally how hardcore that speedrun is. <laughs> literally using the pause menu to pre-position your mouse for the next click, so you don't waste any precious fractions of a second. So that's a level of training and preparation and learning the game that I'm not willing to put the time and effort into. Like, there is absolutely no way. That goes against my rule that I made for myself about achievement hunting a while back, about don't achievement hunt anything that you know for a fact is going to be wasting your time with the amount of time and effort you have to put in. Whether it's something that's way too grindy, or something that makes me have to replay a game over and over again with no other benefits. You'd rather do Hollow Knight Pantheons? So would I. Because at least then I'd actually be achieving something. Like, that's actually fresh content. Fighting those new versions of the bosses and completing the whole pantheon. Just playing the whole game again, trying to get under a certain time, is incredibly boring to me. Time to check out Goro Goa speedrun tricks. Well, that's the thing I already did. I read the walkthrough guide. And that's where I read about the, um, the pause preposition your mouse for the hotspot thing. And I was like, if it requires that level of fucking around, then... That's obscene. On the plus side, you don't have to worry about both achievements. If you're going for the beat it in 30 minutes achievement, that requires the kind of precision that means you're already going to get the beat the game in 500 moves achievement anyway. So you don't have to really think about that one.
Shantae requires three to four hours, but can be done in two. Yeah, see, that's more palatable. If a game can, if a game can be technically done in many less hours than what it asks of you, if you like really know what you're doing, then that's that's a lot better. That's a lot kinder to a gamer's time. Elden runs speed runs like four minutes. Yeah, but that's cheesing it though. Um, I'm not particularly like I find um speed run tactics to like break the game to get through it interesting. Like I always find it fascinating to see what people do, but I don't really respect it as much. Like I don't really want to see someone finish Elden Ring in four minutes. I'm more impressed about how fast someone can beat it legit without any glitch tricks or things that were never intended by the developer. You don't do speedruns where you skip everything? Well, I'm not personally much of a speedrunner anyway. Like, I like to play a game legit, enjoy it, get whatever achievements I can on the way through, be efficient. But once the game is done, I've got no interest in going back and doing it again with another layer of rule set like okay now i'm going to try and beat the game as fast as i can because at that point i'm like why would i do that when i can just play a new game and enjoy new experiences like i'm just wasting precious time there's not enough time in the human life to experience every game movie tv show anime we're dying man we're slowly dying <laughs> i'm gonna be on my deathbed thinking like fuck i didn't play that game i didn't play that game if i didn't play ico again for the Second or third time, I could have fit another game in there. Most Metroidvanias are much shorter if you don't hundred percent the map. Yeah, but see, hundred percent the map is is part of a as a part of normal game completion. Um. So if I'm playing through a Metroidvania, I'm gonna do stuff like that, but I'm not gonna play it again. Specifically, not visiting half the map just to see how fast I can beat the game in. Like I'm like, why am I doing that? I've got other games to play, man. There's a list and it's growing. I've always been kind of interested in those Shantae games. How many are there? Is there like two or three of them? Because I think at least two of them are on Xbox. Or they may have been on Game Pass and then left. There's five? Oh my god. Hang on. Shantae's Inferno. I've played Dante's Inferno. That's a good game. Although it's surprisingly short. Dante's Inferno is the kind of game that... Um, it's like playing one of the old school God of Wars, except like half of one of them in game length. Let's see if any Shantae's are left on uh, Game Pass. How do you spell it? Shantae? Why is nothing coming up? Shant? Oh, they must have all left. There were at least two of them on here at one point, and I missed them, I think. Let me just uh, double-check Google on that. Shante Game Pass. This week's deals with gold includes... Sh oh! Okay, that means I must own one of them, because I always collect everything on Games with Gold every month, so... It sounds like I probably own it. Shantae and the Seven Sirens, Shantae Risky's Revenge. If those two are on Games with Gold, that means I own them. Definitely. Or is it Deals with Gold? Oh, that's different. That's just a percentage off. Pirate's Curse and Risky's Revenge. Those are ringing a bell. Let me... I have a Game Pass Master List. Let me just bring that up. Because it, it tells you ones that are gone as well. Where the fuck did that go? Google Drive. Google Drive. Game Pass Master List. Here we go. Can I do a Excel spreadsheet uh, sheet style search? What if I go Control F? Here we go. Find in sheet, Shantae. 
Shantae Half Genie Hero. It was added in October 2018. It was removed in October 2021. So it was on Game Pass for three years. And I missed it. Motherfucker. Uh, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse was the other one. Added June 2017, removed May 2019. So that was on that was on Game Pass for two years. Ish. Yeah. So I could have played Half Genie Hero and Pirate's Curse if I'd caught them on Game Pass during their tenure. But um when both of those got first put on, I didn't actually have Game Pass. I was probably still at film school, not gaming. And then once I got Game Pass, I must have missed them because I was busy playing other stuff. That's a shame. It's like Mortal Shell with the hack and slash. I mean, no, Dante's Inferno was just game. It was just God of War. It was an exact God of War ripoff. Um, just like four or five hours long, instead of like ten to twelve. Yeah, Mortal Shell is just a third-party Dark Souls clone like um, Lords of the Fallen. Also, Google Death's Gambit Afterlife. Afterlife? What is that, DLC for Death's Gambit? What is Afterlife? Heavenly Sword was very good. That was um, like the start of that game developer too. And uh, Andy Serkis was in that, in Heavenly Sword. He mo-capped the, uh, the villain. Oh, it was the Redux thing. Okay. I was, I was confused by the Afterlife tag, that's all. Um, that's definitely not on Game Pass. I would have seen it. That was like a, a new era for game graphics as well. Like that was very close to the start of the PS3 generation. And I don't think we'd seen anything like Heavenly Sword when that first dropped. Like the fluidity of the animation, the graphics of the environments, the mocap acting, like so much of that game was next level. It's probably dated by today's standards. I mean, uh, who knows? Sometimes you go back in time like that and you, you wonder why we, our minds were so blown. But that's technology for you. Don't I still... Don't I still have this fa uh, wish listed? I don't. Okay, I'll do it now. Weird. I felt like the last time we talked about this, I wish listed it, but I don't know why it wasn't. I must have played most of Annapurna's catalog by now, surely. Annapurna Interactive. Oh, it's a mountain. They named themselves after a mountain. Here we go. Annapurna Interactive. Whoops. Fuck, look at all those games. Rot Remains of Edith Finch. Played it. Love it. Flower. Played it. Love it. Gorogoa. Played it. Love it. Just then. <laughs> Caught up. Florence. Haven't played it. Donut County. Played it. Love it. Gone Home, played it, love it. Also, um, very genie friendly, that one. Ashen, would love to play it. Missed it on Game Pass, unfortunately. That's a cell shaded cartoon graphics uh, Souls like. Outer Wilds, one of my favorite games of all time. Definitely in my top five games I've ever played. Uh, Journey, played it, love it. Telling Lies, on Game Pass, can play it, probably will. Sayonara Wild Hearts, on my Steam wishlist, would love to play it. It's some kind of musical indie thing. Wattam, don't know what that one is, doesn't ring a bell. Kentucky Route Zero, own it on Steam, haven't got around to playing it yet. Heard it was very good. If Found, never heard of it. Unfinished Swan, played it, love it on PS3. 
I am dead. Never heard of that one. Pathless. That's the one with the falcon where you slide through the... Uh, you do the bow and arrow sliding through the glass, uh, the grass to keep your speed up. That looks kind of cool. I'd love to play that too. Maquette. That was a PS5 launch digital download game about perspective switching puzzling, similar to what we just did, but in 3D. Uh, last stop, played it, love it. 12 minutes, just missed it on Game Pass. Actually planned to play it, but I got too busy with work and I missed it. Fuck. Daisy Ridley was in that. Artful Escape, one of my favorite games of the year. Absolutely loved that game. Guitar Odyssey. Solar Ash, heard it's very good, would love to play it. Memoir Blue, on Game Pass, planning to play it soon maybe. Looks really short. Neon White, that was at the Game Awards. That's apparently very good. We'll probably play it eventually. There's Stray. Definitely going to play that one day. Can't wait. Love my kits. Hohokum? Heard the name. Can't remember what it is. And Hindsight. Not out yet. And then 2023 and Beyond is Cocoon, Lorelei, Bounty Hunter, Storyteller, Flock, Forever Ago, Lost Wild, Open Road, Skin Deep, Thirsty Suitors. That's that um, Indian game that was shown at the game. Uh, what was it? The um, what was that game expo at the start of the year? Summer of Gaming. They showed that off. That looks cool. And one of the Silent Hills is apparently being published by Annapurna, which is weird. Fuck, I love this company. Right up there with Devolver Digital. They're great. Anyway, sorry, I was distracted from the uh, chat for a bit there. Um, Heavenly Sword is on PS Premium. Oh, neat. Death Stranding initially got announced. It was a massive thing when the sequel got announced at the Game Awards. We were like, groans. Were we? I mean, I don't, I don't hate Death Stranding. I'd love to stream it someday. It looks right up my alley. Never got into the puzzle stuff in Outer Wilds much, but that game was atmospheric as fuck. What what puzzle stuff? Were there puzzles in Outer Wilds? I don't remember there being any puzzles. It was all exploration and sussing out the um uh what was going on in the universe. If I played Ashen after Crisis Core, would you watch? Oh, I definitely drop by when I can to check it out a bit. I wouldn't want to spoil too much because that's kind of on my list as well. And I'm really cut that I missed it on Game Pass because I was playing, I was on Game Pass when that was available, but I couldn't fit it into my gaming schedule to get around to it before they removed it. So I will find a way back to that game eventually. But I would like to pop in and see if you start playing it. No motivation for you to play it yet. Yeah, like, regardless of what you play, I do try to stop by when I can. Um, although a lot of the time I tend to wake up, like, after lunch, and then see that you had been online and then off again, since I've been asleep. <laughs> Sometimes our time, our timelines don't match up very well. But a lot of the time, uh, when I get, when I can actually hang out on stream for, like, long periods, it's because I'm, um, I'm working. If I get like a whole bunch of editing work and I have to actually sit here and um, edit for hours, that's usually when like, that's when I've had your Gotham Knights stream up for ages. I've worked for like five hours straight with just your stream up genie on my other monitor. But that's also like... Um, that's why sometimes you don't hear from me for a while. You know, like when I come in and say hi and then say a few things and then like I go radio silent for like an hour and a half and then suddenly I start talking again out of nowhere. It's usually because like I was actually in your stream the entire time. It's just like I went back to focusing on like the, the editing work I was doing and just kind of like randomly paying attention to what was going on in Gotham Nights. And then eventually like I'll eventually like sit back uh, to take a chill from work and then I'll start like saying stuff again. 
Twitch doesn't count you as a viewer. Are you sure? Because usually if you've got like three or four viewers and I jump in, it goes up to five. And then it stays like that. You got a lurk, Sean? No. What are you talking about? I think you're forgetting. I'm on a multi-screen PC. Like, I don't actually leave... I, don't, I never actually, like, leave your, um, um, your stream. It's open the entire time. I'm literally sitting and watching it. I keep seeing one and then two sometimes. Oh, but that's the same on any stream. Like, I see the same thing. Like, I'll be on here just talking to Tenor, uh, and there'll be, like, two people in here, and then it'll go up to three. And then back to two, and then to one, and then two. Deck the entire time I'm talking to Tanner. Oh, you're on. Wait, you're on. You're on right now. I didn't actually know you were streaming currently. Oh, are you talking about my stream? Are you talking about my numbers? Mine says five. Sorry, I thought you were talking about yourself, Jeannie. Like, when you said, what do you see right now? I thought you were talking about your viewer number. So I thought maybe you were... Sorry. Um... Yeah, mine says five. Three of which we know who is Tenor, Sham, and Jeannie. Uh, Tanky was in here before, so... He might be number four if he hasn't taken off. Yeah, you're getting ready for work. That's why I was confused, because I thought you were talking about yourself, but I was like, you can't be streaming, you're going to work. <laughs> oh yeah, and sometimes we get multiple tenors, because tenor has like three or four accounts on here. So, just to clarify, when people do exclamation mark lurk, what does that do? Does that let them stay on as a viewer number, but like actually leave the stream to do something else and then come back later, but it still keeps the viewer number as a lurk? Like what is that? I never fully understood the lurk thing. It's just a bot command if they have it set up. I know it's a bot command, but what does the command do? It keeps them as a viewer if they go to do something else and it lets the streamer know they will stop talking, but they're in the background. So it's basically just a way of saying AFK. Does streamer himself count? So the bot command doesn't really do anything. It's just a way of saying AFK, like you achieve the same thing by basically just typing AFK. It's just more of a, a Twitch thing, a Twitch terminology. Whereas AFK is like the greater internet gaming community. Streamer does count if you're watching your own stream. That's true. Yeah, but like that still doesn't make sense to me. Like, why is it a fee? Like, why would you have to implement a feature? All you're all you're doing is telling them you're lurking. You're just saying like, you're basically just saying, "Hey, I'm going AFK," and then you do. Like. That's just a communication thing that keeps you as a viewer. So if it's implemented as a feature, the actual bot command is literally designed to keep your viewer number on the stream if you're clicking off the stream. Like if you're watching on phone and you switch to a different app, like it wouldn't, keep, it wouldn't count you as a viewer if it knows that you're not actually actively on the app, right? So that's why someone would lurk.
that might be why I've always been confused by that because um, I'm not a phone user with this kind of stuff. I very rarely use my phone anyway for anything. I'm always on a. I'm always in front of the PC. So, um, my version of lurking is literally just like it stays open, like the entire time on a different monitor. Because I have another two monitors over here, I can do stuff on, and just let stuff go on over there. Lurking means you're an active viewer whilst also not being active. And once they talk and chat, it deactivates it. So is there a way uh, with the feature, with the bot command, is there a way for the streamer to call up a lurking list to show which people have like gone lurk? A way to show supporting the stream despite their inactivity. Okay, fair enough. I'm just clarifying because I've never really truly understood that one, but I've never actually spoken about it at length with anybody to actually clear it up. Because I've never actually used it. Like when I've lurked, I've literally just lurked. Like I haven't announced it or used a command. I've just sat here and kept watching off to the side. A view account of 40, but three people talking. Yeah, I mean, that's that's been consistent with since I've become affiliate. Like, um, I always seem to have at least two or three lurkers. Like, for example, right now, there's three of us talking and there's six viewers. So that's about my norm, my norm for my stream. There seems to always be like two or three silent numbers. It's a good method when people are working and they can't chat. I think that's why I've never needed to use a thing like that because because I work from home and I'm technically am just lurking because I'm actually working on my main screen while the um the, the stream's happening over here. Like I'm not actually separated from it. Like I can chat anytime I want because I'm working for myself. So if, if I'm sitting here editing and I'm kind of half watching, occasionally looking over at Genie Stream, like at any point I feel like I can just turn around and like comment on something she did or, or talk to her randomly. I wish you would let me know just so I know you're there. Oh, but I also don't ghost. That's the thing. I think that's why I've never thought of it because I would never leave a stream without saying something first. Like I wouldn't say goodbye. Um, so technically I live a left. That's the thing. I never really enter a lurk state. Like, I'm always there watching. I'm always, like, ready to say something at any point. But, like, if there's, not, if there's nothing to say or nothing to um, comment on, I'm usually just sort of casually watching while doing other stuff. And then when something pops up, I'll just be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. The only way you know that I've left, if after I've arrived, if I've said goodbye, I need to go and do something, something, see you later. Like, I'll never, I'll never ghost a stream. Like, I don't vanish. <laughs> well, you don't know if I'm still there or not. It'd be more awkward for him to say hello. Since... Oh, no, I always say hello. It's No, it's the opposite. What I'm saying is, like, if I show up on a stream, I immediately say hi and start talking. But the thing is, I don't go into a lurk state because I never technically leave unless I actually say goodbye and leave. Like... If I say a few things and then I don't say anything for a while, it's because I'm still there. I'm like, I might be doing stuff on this screen or um, quickly sending messages in Facebook on the other stream and then doing more editing over here. But I'm always watching Genie stream on the right hand side here until something happens that makes me want to say something about it. And then I suddenly start talking again. Like I've also, I've also never... I've never true lurked for any one stream that I know. Like I wouldn't go into Genie stream and not say hello and actually just lurk as a invisible number. Why have I still got this up? Close that. Close that. Close that. Like if it's someone I follow and that I know and I occasionally go to their streams, like I'll always talk when I first jump in, let them know I'm there. And then 
If I never said goodbye, then I'm always there. I never left. I'm just hanging out, basically. I, um... I always think about how um, frustrating it, be, it must be to stream uh, your way, Genie, because to stream the way you stream, it means you, you're streaming direct from your PlayStation, right? Which means in order to, in order to communicate with chat, that means you must have, uh, you must have your profile open on your phone and you have to like type through that when you want to talk to people. Your laptop? Oh, fair enough. I guess same deal as the phone, just bigger. Thanks, Jenna. <laughs> Minx is probably busy setting up um, Christmas stuff for her fam. That's why you always have at least one, because it's you. Oh, yeah, because you're logged in to be able to chat, yeah. What time is it? 2 a.m. Not bad. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I always think of how frustrating that must be, though. To have to, um... To have to kind of, like, pause the game for a sec to be able to, like, turn around to the laptop and, like, type stuff really quick and then go back to the game. Doesn't that drive you a little bit crazy? You became really good with controller typing on FF14. I remember the days of controller typing. My 360 had one of those um, chat pad mini keyboards that was connected on the bottom. So I could um, type on the mini keyboard with my thumbs. That was very cool. You have a rage request? Oh, actually, yeah. Sham, I should give you a free raid request. Don't bother using the um. Don't bother using the uh the channel point request. Cause um, the Bob Ross one didn't work, that you did the other the other time, after you left. Um, turns out the Bob Ross stream doesn't allow, it doesn't allow um raiding. I tried to raid it, and it popped up with a message saying that raids are blocked on this channel. So I remember saying to Minx at the time that the next time I see Sham, I should just let him um, like pick one for free to make up for the points he spent. Sham rec what? Tenor, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, hang on. I'm going to reject the points back to you, Tenna, because we were already going to let Sham choose it. So what's the, um, the raid request? You said you may have a raid request. Are you just checking if they're online? You're going to say Shino Saito? I don't think you've brought that one up before. And then I'll check. Blip. Back to Twitch. Who this? Oh yeah, here they are. Monster Hunter Rise. Singapore. Cool. I'm from Singapore. Language, English, and uh, squiggly letters. Some Asian language. I do gaming and art streams. I enjoy playing a variety of things. 
Well, I like, but not limited to. People do this a lot in their bios. Oh, fuck, I can't do that in my bio. Yeah, they did announce Rise is going to be on Game Pass. Fuck, that's going to be that's going to be really popular on Game Pass. So many people are going to jump on Monster Hunter for free. Again, Tenor is rejected. Well, technically not. You were just requesting something that was already happening, Tenor. So I just gave you your points back for free. <laughs> oh shit, you made me hiccup. Ugh. It's just the base game. <clears throat> That's fine. I don't even know the base game. Um. Yeah, uh, I've noticed a lot of people put in their bios their gaming style like what games they regularly play and things like that and i'm like fuck i don't have that i don't have that kind of information to put in mind because i always play something different my bio is what i did i did what what is my bio hang on let me just check that no my bio says is human male <laughs> I'm an ultra variety streamer. I will literally play anything. So you're basically calling me a um, a streaming slut. You're calling me a gaming slut, Sham. Saying that I'll literally play anything. Sometimes more than one at a time. You can run video game trains on me if you like. I'm a game pass streamer. Well, no, it's not technically true. I'll, um, I'll stream. Uh, I stream Steam games as well. And I stream from uh, my PlayStation. And I'm also going to be streaming VR stuff soon. Once I redesign this study to accommodate it. Um, Game Pass just is a, a, a pretty common source of where I get uh, my games from that I stream. Just because I'm too poor to really afford to buy new games regularly. So it makes more sense since I've already got Game Pass, to make use of what I can get access for free. So yeah, that wouldn't technically be true. I don't know if any of you remember this, but remember earlier in the year when um, I got um, given a free Steam game by a developer to play on my stream, and I did? Like, the very next two streams, I think. Don't want to buy games, streamer. It's not don't want to buy games. I do want to buy games. It's can't buy games because it's poor. Needs to buy noodles and pay rent. Yeah, I shill for a lot of things, don't I? I really should be sponsored by some major companies already. Where's the Biscoff sponsorship? Where's the Udi sponsorship? Come on. How do you detect how long we've been using? Oh, there's some kind of command. Uh, Thynan uses it all the time. He's obsessed with it, but I can't remember what it is. It's exclamation mark. Followage, I think. Okay, I misspelled that horribly. Is it this? Yeah, followage. Shonkachu is not following Shonkachu. Oh no! <laughs> Sham has been following for seven months, thirteen days, and three hours. I haven't seen anyone use that um, command in a while. Cause um, it's been a couple of streams since Thailand's been around. He must be busy. I came in at Gungeon. Yeah, you and Thailand both came in at Gungeon. That's why um that's why you've seen him so regularly because you both sh you both showed up at the same same game. Tenna is one of the oldest. Tenna's an old man. He's an old man Shonkachu streamer. That goes way back to uh Toho Luna Nights. And I think the very next stream after that was near Automata which you came back for, and then you stayed ever since. Mm. 
you don't have a massive follow count, you have a nice amount of consistent regulars. Yeah, it seems like it, it ends up, it's usually one or the other. It's like, if you have any kind of growth whatsoever, it goes towards consistent regulars. If you get any kind of massive, uncontrollable surge of growth where you actually become big, then it switches to um, the other type where it's just like hundreds of randoms in the chat all the time, just going batshit nuts. And then like you have to use things like a VIP and highlight message to really dig through the chaff. You played Nier Automata? Yeah, I played the entirety of Nier Automata, all endings, all achievements, um, in a series of very long streams in a row. I was like playing 10 to 12 hour streams, day after day, getting through the entirety of Nier Automata. So that's only the that's the second that's only the second ever game I played that Tenor was around for. Because that was the second game I played after the game that Tenor showed up on, which was Toho Lunar Knights. Because we know how obsessed Tenor is with the Toho franchise. That's how that's how you bait Tenor in. Play a Toho game, you'll catch his attention. <laughs> you can just buy the platinum for Automata in game. There's a couple of achievements. Uh, but they're very specific. Um, you don't buy you don't buy the platinum per se, the full completion. It's a couple of specific ones you can basically clear out easily uh, if you have a lot of in-game currency. Like the complete, it's usually it's a couple of achievements for the completion of certain grindy achievements, like collect all weapons, collect all chips, like those ones. Those are the ones that you can purchase the achievements for. I'm glad it's in-game currency though, and not like fucking um real world money bullshit because they could have so done that strange how they replay the whole section with only minor story difference oh that's because the two main characters only have certain parts they do diverge from the main story so there's uh, some big chunks that are very similar or that are the same exactly but then when you get to a2's story the third one that's when it like deviates wildly because that's when it st it keeps going after the previous ones ended. You were going to sleep and I was playing after you woke up? Yeah. <laughs> but every I feel like every regular that I've got on my channel has experienced that, though. I feel like Genie's experienced that. I swear, like... I swear I've had Genie show up and leave early in a stream and then, like, resurface later on after coming back from work or waking up or something. Uh, Minx has done it. I know Minx has come and gone and found me still streaming. Yeah, it's... The un the thing that ca might catch you off guard with Nier Automata is that it's different from how Nier worked. Nier Automata literally uses this New Game Plus to continuously give you new content like you're playing the game the story again from different points of view to the point where the story ends up continuing to the actual final proper endings because without that there aren't any proper endings like you literally have only seen half the, the story if you don't do it that way the problem with the first near was that it was just playing the game again it's just you got better endings you got more fleshed out endings and easter egg endings added on top by the time he got to the end. So there was less incentive to actually do it unless you really wanted to be a completionist and see the full ending. But aside from that fact, it was literally just new new game plus in the game and everything was the same for the most part. So I was not really into that back then. And I would have assumed that Nier Automata was the same until I read up about how it worked. And I was like, oh, fuck, you actually really do have to play it like three times because you're not actually playing it three times. Those three times as the actually just the entirety of the game chopped up. It's very misleading. A lot of people would have not even thought to play like start the game again after that first ending. But they literally have only played a third of the game. Like they're missing so much of the story that still hasn't happened yet. It's when you would stream early and I get to work and you'd be... Yeah, that's fair. So yours is more work-related then, whereas... 
I'm pretty sure Sham, Tenor, Minx, even Thynan, I'm pretty sure I've seen all of them show up after going to bed and coming back. Thynan used to make a big deal out of it. He'd show up and be like, you're still streaming? How is this possible? He'd act, he'd literally have an, a reaction to it. Like, how are you doing this? This is like inhuman. And I'm like, I'm just still here, man. Like playing a game isn't taxing. I'm playing a fucking video game. It's the easiest thing in the world. I'm literally playing with toys. It's not like I've been at the gym for 12 hours straight and I'm still pumping iron or running on a treadmill. Nine's gameplay was a bit hacky. There was a lot of hacking in Nine's gameplay, and that's where the bullet hell suddenly appeared. Um, controversial opinion: I find A two hotter than um, uh, the main character. What's her name? Two B. I find A two hotter than Two B. I said it. Feel free to cancel me. Feel free to flame me in the comments. Yeah, I remember you doing the um the overnighters. A2 is hot as hell, so yeah. B2 is really hot. There's nothing wrong with B2, but I do find A2 a little bit hotter by a small margin. And I think it's because I have a bias towards uh, long hair, like long glam, like long hair on, on women is, a, is like a bit of a, a trigger for me. She's the voice of Jeremy Lee and she's in Cyberpunk. More of a tits and ass girl. Well, I don't think you I don't think you can say tits and ass girl. I mean, we're all into tits and ass, but you're supposed to differentiate between whether you are a tits or ass person. Like that's the common I know that it sucks having to choose, but I mean, men have been like men have been doing that for decades, like um delineating between each other or whether you're a tits and an ass a tits or an ass guy both i'm greedy okay we all are like <laughs> in reality every man every lesbian is a tits and an ass person there's everyone loves tits everyone loves ass that's without saying the question is if you were to split the camp and you could only go one way or the other would you lean towards the tits or would you lean towards the ass which would be the primary attention grabber which would grab you first Because I, if I had to go one way or the other, I'd be, I'm a tits man. I'm about the titties. Love a nice bum, but if I had to look at one of the two, it'd be titties. Nine S had the most cake. <laughs> nine, nine S was a, <laughs> nine S was a toy boy. He was like, he was like one of those, uh, beta twinks that more, um, Dominant mistress like women step on with their heels. That's what 9S was. He was a slave boy. I could I've seen um I've seen the Rule 34 fan art of like 2B in like the sexy boots with the heels with 9S on like a leash and chain and collar. There's a lot of that. Nine S is like a harem protagonist. Yeah, but he's a bit piss. Oh wait, actually, that you're actually right. Harem protagonists are usually are very, are very weak, non-masculine, uh, pussy boy male types, because that's like part of the fantasy. You're not a masculine male, but you're getting like the male ego uh, fantasy of like all the all the women. Yeah, so we're all we're all breast people here then for them. Tenna is cheating. Because you're only allowed to say ass or tits, like one of the two. Um, because I do agree with you, Tenor. Face is very important to me. Like, me and Jeannie have talked about this once before. Um, 
in real life when it comes to like being attracted to women like face is a very very big thing like if i see if i see a picture of a woman's naked body there is a few seconds where i'll be like that is a nice body that's very attractive i like that but then i like immediately lose interest after that because it's just a naked body like yeah we've all been there we've all had that it's not as exciting as when you were a teenager once you've had enough sex it's like yeah just naked body by itself is like cool i like it but it you know i'm not freaking out or anything but up here very important like i can't tell if a woman is hot if you cut her off here she can have the hottest body in the world the nicest titties the nicest bum I will appreciate that, but I won't say that that's a hot chick yet until you show me what's above this. Because if what's up here is like Butterface territory, then I'm like, whoa, that body's wasted. Oh no. <laughs> face isn't so important to me unless their face screams mask. Oh, like masculine. Yeah, you're a piece of shit. I don't know. It seems like it'd be the opposite way around. I feel like you're more of a piece of shit if you only care about a woman's body. You've, you've got that flipped, but like, I still won't say that though, because I don't think, I don't think liking any part of a person makes you a pe like a piece of shit. If it's at the expense of something else, like it's always a, you do you situation. Um, but poses use, use butterfly. <laughs> I didn't know what else to call it at the time. I, you put, I got put on the spot. Um, I didn't want to say something like more directly offensive, like just straight ugly. Or um, elephant man territory. Sometimes, sometimes uh, people's faces can look just so plain as well. Or like you said, the mass, the masculine facial feature thing where. The face is like really square and bony. Um, and you're just like, eh, should it? I'm not really feeling the butterflies looking at that. But if it's a nice, like, if it's a, if it's like a, if it's a soft core pornographic picture of just a naked woman where you see the entire thing and they have like long, glamorous hair and a sexy face and the body's also good, like, that's peak. But that face can ruin it for me very quickly, no matter how hot the body is. Like, just keep it above a certain level of um, cuteness. I'm also I'm also a fan of makeup. That's become a very uncommon thing to admit to. But my last two long-term girlfriends were both makeup artists by pure coincidence. And so I'm used to that being a very common element in my life, like women who wear a lot of makeup. So I'm kind of used to, I'm used to appreciating good makeup to the point where like, I feel weird when I'm around people that this guys do this a lot. Actually, when guys are trying to virtue signal, they do that shit where they're like, they talk about how like, Oh, I only find women hot when they like have no makeup. Like women are beautiful. Like they're like natural. Why would they ruin that by caking on all that? Like whore shit and stuff. And I'm like, nah, I feel like you're, trying too hard to sound like a white knight to women women don't appreciate that as much as you think they do like if a woman put two fucking hours into doing the best makeup she can possibly do and you're fucking patronizing her by talking about how she doesn't need the makeup she's so beautiful natural and shit it's like bro that took her two hours of fucking painting the mona lisa like immaculate fucking fake lashes and all the the whole deal and you're there, like, fucking wanking off with that virtue signaling stuff. Like, I don't want to hear that. Like, they put, they put so much effort into that shit. And I know. <laughs> I've dated enough makeup artists to know how long they can spend at that vanity table. In front of the mirror. Doing the thing. It's sometimes a lot longer than two hours, let me tell you. Depends on where you're going. And how important it is. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with no makeup. Women are cute without makeup, but I do also appreciate makeup. I think women look even hotter when they do really good makeup. Isn't, you know, it's...
yeah it's just it just bugs me when men put on that bullshit of like really ragging on makeup and talking up the natural thing in a way that you can just tell you can just tell that they're dick riding they're trying to get those brownie points they think that that's the stuff that women want to hear that like oh you think i'm beautiful for who i am underneath it's like they don't most women like my last girlfriend used to like find that really offensive like i've heard her rant about that to me where she's just like fuck like it's so fake she finds it so fake when men do that and she's like motherfucker i love my makeup i love the makeup look on women i'm attracted to other women because she was bi she's like i'm attracted to other women that have sexy makeup even if it's like a lot of makeup like really whorish makeup she loves it she thinks that looks hot as and she'll lurk other women on instagram with that kind of stuff so like when men do that stuff she's just like massive eye roll and groan about it and they think they're they think they're literally being like prince charming about it too but yeah it's like if you want to put it into metaphor terms it's like let's say you're a car guy and you like subarus a lot you're gonna love a subaru directly off the lot you see that subaru like that new brand spanking new default stock subaru nothing fancy about it you're just gonna be like oh that's a good subaru i love it sexy but you put your own upholstery in there you decorate the dashboard you put the rims on it you put the neon lights underneath you put the spoiler on the back you put some badges on even hotter even cooler it's the same with women everyone loves the the stock car just as it is but it gets even better after that once you start applying the accoutrement It'd be like a mechanic saying other people can appreciate the nice paint job and decals because they don't do it themselves. Well, fair enough. The metaphor starts to get a little bit too complicated at that point. <laughs> we'll drop it there. Oh, hey, look, we made four hours, so it's not too short a stream in the end. Cool. Is Watchamajigger still online? Yes, he is. The word Subaru makes you think of RE0? What? Resident Evil 0? The word Subaru makes you think of Resident Evil 0? That's weird. I don't, I don't know what the connection is there. Oh, wait. Fuck. I did it again. I think I made the same mistake I did last time. You're talking about that anime RE0. Okay, you left out the semicolon. That's what fucked me up. Don't do that. No, you didn't. You didn't leave out the semicolon. I literally just fucked that up for no reason. Okay, fair enough. RE0, not RE0. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Genie. <laughs> yeah, I caught on. This is the second time I've done that, to be fair. I'm pretty sure the first time one of you ever brought up RE0, I, made, I did the exact same thing. I thought you were talking about Resident Evil. It's re zero. Okay. You guys have talked about it enough too that I really got to stop doing that. You think I, I would lock that in my brain already? I've just like, I've been a Resident Evil fan for like most of my life, and I've played all like all the games. So, the first thing that's going to come to my head is Resident Evil when you put Re on the screen. I can't help it. I feel bad for Gears of War and. Um, God of War fans. <laughs> because both Gears of War and God of War fans both use the G-O-W acronym. So when they talk to each other, no one knows what fucking game they're talking about because they're both using the same acronym. <laughs> Fuck, I hate acronyms. Acronyms in gaming are so messy because there's so many games with similar acronyms that it's... It's really annoying. No one cares about Gears of War anymore. God of War is all the rage. I mean, they're still massive franchises. I'm not going to hate on either of them. I played the first three Gears of War, had a great time. Would love to play the newer ones if I can get around to it someday. I will catch up on God of War as well. Played all the old ones of that. Love the look of the new ones. It's all good. It's all good in the gaming hood. 
I don't like it when games with long titles acronym themselves. It pisses me off a little bit. You know how long it took me to figure out what people were talking about when they were talking about BOTW? Like, I kept seeing BOTW everywhere. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, no one is actually saying the name out loud. You played only Gears of War 3? Oh, so you came in, like, the third act of the story. You would have been really lost. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was months before I figured out what that acronym was. When I, someone actually said it, the full name, in the same conversation as someone who had said the acronym. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's the one. Breath of the Wild. Exactly. Exactly. That sh got, that shat me so much. It took me so long to figure out that BOTW was Breath of the Wild because every time I saw it mentioned, the conversation was vague enough that there were no like Zelda indicators to, to figure out that it was Zelda. And even worse, if they do the full al al um the full acronym, like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Then you've got this sentence of letters, of consonants, and it's like, are you fucking serious? Just say the name, goddammit. So you don't have to make acronyms out of everything. Like me personally, I played quite a few Gears of War, I played quite a few God of Wars. I have never called any of those games G-O-W or Gao. Not, in, not out loud, and I never typed it. I typed that shit. AC has three. Armored Core Animal Crossing Assassin's Creed. The difference... Okay. If you're calling Animal Crossing AC, I hate you. Like, I don't... That pisses me off. Um, Armored Core. Very old, very uh, revered franchise. Should probably type that all out as well. No reason to AC Armored Core. That uh, franchise deserves full typage. I don't. I hate Animal Crossing. Um, I like it. <laughs> I don't know why it was so embarrassing to admit that. Um, I haven't played the, the newer ones, but I did play a bunch of Animal Crossing on the GameCube. And I enjoyed my time with it then. And I've heard it's gotten even more, even better with the Switch and stuff. So I don't know. Maybe one day I'll try it out, but... I don't have as much time for endless games like that that don't really have a purpose or an ending or a point. Because I used to play The Sims as well. Like, I played a shitload of The Sims 1 and The Sims 2. But at a certain point, I had to ask myself, like, what am I playing this for? Like, what am I trying to achieve? Where am I going with this? There's no actual end point. I always thought AC is air conditioner. I mean, yeah, AC is the common nomenclature for air conditioner. But yeah, gaming, like Jeannie said. Um, I accept AC in the Assassin's Creed situation as long as you're semicoloning. So if you say AC Black Flag, or if you say AC Unity, or if you say AC Syndicate, then I'm fine with that. Because that is more descriptive. If you're fully typing out what's after the semicolon, then I'm, um, I'm, I'm down with that. I don't like it if you just say AC. AC is too short an acronym to know what the fuck you're talking about in any situation. No, no full acronym, no ACBH. If we're talking Assassin's Creed, AC Origins, AC Valhalla, AC Odyssey. That I will accept. Because Assassin's Creed is a fairly long two-word sentence to type out, especially assassins having all those double S's and shit. It is a little annoying to... So if you're just ACing that and then semicolon a full word, then cool. The Emerald Crossing does have an end when you pay off your debt. I don't think I've ever played it long enough to pay off my debt to Tom Nook. I never trusted that... that cheeky cunt. Probably one of the worst villains in gaming history. I understand if a villain wants to blow up the earth. I understand if the villain wants to take over the universe. I understand if a villain wants to defeat a hero for a particular personal reason. Tom Nook, and that's not how you spell Nook, by the way. It's N-O-O-K, I think. Not Nook as in nuclear warhead. Um, Tom Nook is too relatable 
a real world villain. He's a villain in the pure capitalistic sense in that he tricks you into a binding mortgage contract and then lives off you from that point on, which is way too realistic a villain. That's the kind of shit that like a legit landlord in real life would pull on poor unsuspecting um poor people. And then he auto upgrades your house and tells you that the mortgage number is increased when you reach the number each time. And you didn't even ask. For that wasn't in the contract. There, show me, show me the written contract that says I agreed to having a second story to my house for an increase in mortgage. You fuck face. Fuck, I'm riled up now. Now I know, now I remember why I stopped playing Animal Crossing. Tom Nuke. Piece of shit. Um... I guess it's trickier when you're talking about the uh, the older ACs because there was Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed 3. The, when they have a number after the end, that, that makes it a little bit harder. Because just writing AC3 is not descriptive enough. Revelations and uh, Brotherhood, on the other hand. AC2, semicolon, Brotherhood. That works. They were just numbers. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess you'd have to if you're doing the semicolon thing, because then it's just... I just hate the idea of AC by itself, even with a number. I just don't think that's descriptive enough to know what you're talking about. Fuck, I miss AC1. I remember back in the day picking up Assassin's Creed 1 launch day when it first came out, when it was like a big deal game release, and the the, uh, the reviews were big. And having my mind blown by the game structure. Riding that horse through the desert between the different um, uh, Middle Eastern towns. And seeing like the castle come up over the horizon as you come over the cliff. That was magical. People don't give the first game enough credit. They all just whinged about the game's uh, mission structure after its release. People kept finding ways to shit on it. And I was like, man, you don't understand how good we have it. I come from the era where I had a SNES and a Sega Mega Drive, where it was all just side scrollers and shit. And now look what we got. Gamers are too easy to poo on stuff. They're too quick to poo on stuff. We're all spoiled. I look at Twitter and you and uh, YouTube a lot, and everyone just shits on everything that comes out. And it's like, bro, we're in a golden age. Everything looks great. The collectibles the number one complaint. I remember going for that achievement. I I hundred percented the first Assassin's Creed, and that was a pain, man. That was what was it, three hundred little white flags spread out between the desert and the three major cities, and there was no in-game way to track them. Like there was no map, there was no icons. You just had to find them. So you had to have like a separate map on the computer, and you had to be crossing them off. And if you collected a bunch by accident while doing missions. Good luck remembering which ones you've already got and finding the area where they were in again. AC1 was flags. I don't know if feathers also. I remember the flags because the flags were... There were fuckloads of them. Assassin's Creed 1. Let me just double check that. Because I do remember something about feathers, but I thought maybe that was Assassin's Creed 2. Okay, wait. I think I found something. Oh, high points. Flag, flag, flag. flag. Yep, there's a separate achievement for all the flags in every region of every town so they've separated the achievements up it's not just one big achievement for all the flags 100 and each oh 420 fuck okay i uh under guessed it's not 300 it was 420 flags with no in-game way to track them that was a pain that takes me back <laughs> oh no I'm not seeing feathers. I think maybe you might be thinking of um, Assassin's Creed 2, possibly, Genie.
Everything else was easy. You didn't even have to try very hard for most of the achievements. Let me just quickly uh, guide search feathers. No. No word of feathers at all in the guide. Let me try, let me type in Assassin's Creed Feathers without any actual game number or title and see what comes up. Assassin's Creed 2, where to find all the feathers? Okay. Assassin's Creed 2 with feathers. That they, it replaced um, the flags from the first game. Yep. Assassin's Creed 2 was good. Um, people mainly loved all the things it fixed from number one, but I was never a number one hater in the first place, so it was all uphill for me. Like, I, just, I went from great to great, basically. I'd say, me personally, Assassin's Creed 2's biggest strength was the main character. I think Ezio was probably one of the most charming, uh, relatable of the main characters. I think one of the one of the criticisms of Assassin's Creed 1 was that Altair didn't project much of a personality. He was very super serious and just focused on like the assassin objective. Um whereas Ezio gives the vibe of having having had a whole life, having had a familial connect connection, having a sense of humor. Cassandra is better than Ezio. Oh, but now you're fast forwarding to like fucking Odyssey days. Like we're talking a whole different series of games. Um, wait, was Cassandra Odyssey? You could be male or female. What's, is the name different if you pick the male to the female, like, or is it a unisex name to cover both of them? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I played all the Assassin's Creeds up to Syndicate. I finished the Syndicate, and then the series stopped for a while, and then they rebooted with Origin, making it more of an RPG. And that's where I never got back on board, because by the time they rebooted it, in that gap between the Assassin's Creed uh, trilogies, I'd um, that's when I went to film school. And so I wasn't playing games during that period, because I was very busy. So yeah, those three new RPG ones are the only Assassin's Creed I haven't played. Alexio was written as the sibling that gets sacrificed and Cassandra was a sole protagonist. So did they course correct to, because being able to pick your gender was one of the, um, the things that fans had always asked for? Piece of shit scumbag execs made it. Wait, why is that a bad thing though? They didn't actually change, they didn't take away the option, they just added an option. I mean that's that's a net positive. The fact that you can pick is gonna satisfy both sides of the fence. As opposed to making one or the other, which is how the all the older games were like. Um He's terrible as a main character. I mean, I can't really, I can't really give an opinion on it since I never actually got that far in the Assassin's Creed games. I still have to play Origins and then that as well. <laughs> maybe I should, maybe when I get to it, I should play as Alexios just to, um, just to get an idea of what you mean. Because I think in all the trailers and Let's Plays I've seen, I've mostly seen people play as the girl. So I don't really know what the guys like at all. You played Assassin's Creed 1 and then skipped all the way to Odyssey? Oh, okay, fair enough. Interesting. Um, you know what's funny? Odyssey has the same response uh, as uh, Mass Effect. What you're saying about Odyssey's male and female options is exactly the same stuff that people say about uh, Mass Effect's male and female Shepard options. Hmm. What do they call her? Femship? 
people seem to be people uh seem to be unanimously agreed that the femship was the better voice acted of the two genders but the male ship was the one that was used as the more iconic uh promotional version of shepherd that's the one you tend to see on all, like all the box arts and posters and trailers which is an interesting division I do think male Shep, which is the way, the way I played it, I do think um, male uh, Shep was um, the funnier of the two options. Because there was something about his straight white male action hero monotone flat charm that, like, it was funny, like, in a weird way. Like, I kind of loved watching him talk to other characters. <laughs> Whereas, um, from the sounds of it, Femship probably came off more like a like a real human being, but probably less comedic value as a um, as a main character, like poking fun at the weirdo robot action hero. Also, uh, another controversial opinion: um, I really like Andromeda, um, which I'm pretty sure some people would hate me for saying. Because that game got fucking tarred and feathered. Even to this day, people roast that game hard. But I kind of love it. <laughs> Unfollowing. Yeah, fair, fair call. I was, uh, I was prepared for that. I know how controversial that game is. Male Shep looked like typical brick warrior. Yeah, he doesn't look like the most, the most diplomatic chap, does he? Like, not someone that would really follow the prime directive. As Star Trek would put it. I haven't actually finished it yet. Because that's when I started film school as well. I was playing it right before starting film school. And I, get through, I got through like half of it. And then I never managed to get back to it. Because I didn't realize how, how busy I was going to get. But fuck I was enjoying it. Here's how, here's how I'll describe it. Compared to uh, Mass Effect proper. Um, yeah. Ten is correct as well. It gets most of its hate because of the bugs. The launch bugs were like unforgivable apparently but i'm a bit easier on that kind of thing also it got patched a lot so they fixed a lot of the crazier ones um here's how i'll describe andromeda compared to mass effect in in brief here's my one here's my one sentence pitch andromeda is star trek to uh the mass effect trilogy's uh star wars uh, if you know what I mean by that, you'll get the gist of what I'm saying. You might have to unpack that a little bit, but I, st I stand by that verdict. It is a weird analogy, I know. It's it's kind of like if you don't already know what I mean, it's probably hard to understand what I what I'm getting at there. Basically, like, here's the thing. The Mass Effect trilogy is like, it's a three movie space opera. It's like Lord of the Rings in a way. It's, it's this big galactic threat. The fucking, what are they called again? Coming from the outer reaches, from the dark part of space to wipe out all humanity. And there's one man that can stop it all. And he's basically a Jedi. And it's basically this big melodramatic trilogy um, space opera, right? Which is basically like Star Wars. It's it's that shit. The Chosen One shit. All that fucking bullshit. Um, Andromeda is like a Star Trek TV show in that it's got a much more low-key focus, especially in the outset. It's about a ship of essentially like spacefaring pilgrims made up of scientists, engineers, soldier types, whatever you need to like colonize new planets, which is led by a Pathfinder who is someone who does the mental yard work to look at the planets that are possible and figure out like places that might be inhabitable. Um, Goldilocks planets, as they call it in real life as well, actually. Um, so like the meat of the game is essentially about exploring planets, meeting other races, and essentially just like in Star Trek, trying to adhere to a prime directive of how you interact with another race as a first contact pathfinder. How do you engage in the diplomacy, 
get across what you're about? Do you help them? Do you decide to not get involved in their politics? All in the process of like exploring the galaxy, scanning and discovering planets and um, trying to designate whether they're inhabitable or colonizable or not. And then going down to the ones that are, which are then open world with your vehicle and whatever, and essentially like doing missions and quests on the surface to make it ready for um, colonization, like clearing out a certain area and stuff. So it's really about, it's less about the big melodramatic, you know, big blockbuster epic universe ending storyline and we got to beat the bad guys bullshit. And it's more about this slow buildup of space exploration, diplomacy with other races and um, colonization efforts. And it goes in through like all these little storylines to do with that stuff with a bigger looming threat in the background just to bring it all back to Mass Effect. But, well, it's not Space Animal Crossing, but I absolutely love that vibe of being part of a science fiction universe that was focused as its primary core gameplay loop on exploration, science, and colonization and first contact alien politics. Um, I found that so much more interesting because like as fun as the Mass Effect trilogy is, it's basically just like a blockbuster movie where you're just like, yeah, the bad guys are coming and yeah, we've got to get the fucking forces together and we got to beat ass and, oh, it's also fucking dramatic and intense and it's like, cool, it's fucking get Michael Bay on board to direct this shit. Um... Man, I just want to be in space. I just want to explore. I want to meet other races. I want to build bases. I want to colonize the bases and make choices. Like, this is going to be a science outpost, so let the scientists off the ship here. And then that gives me, like, a benefit to the mothership in a specific way to the fact that I chose uh, the first outpost on the desert planet to be a science outpost made up of only scientists. And whenever I visit the science outpost, it gets bigger over time. You come back at different points in the main plot, and the... Um, the small colony you set up in this like one flattened out area, you go back there and now there's more buildings and it's bigger. And now there's more NPCs there. And characters that you left there before are now in charge of like new as aspects of it. And suddenly they become quest givers to explore more of the map of that planet that you hadn't been able to get to before. And it like gets bigger that way. What was the Uncharted S Star Wars game? that? Oh, 1313? The one where you play as a bounty hunter? Um, I think you played as some kind of combination Han Solo, Boba Fett type person in that. And it was mostly you escaping from like a prison, a space prison on some random planet. That did look good. The gameplay footage of that was tight. I am looking forward to the new one from um, David Cage's studio. You know, the, the company that does Detroit and Heavy Rain and all those? They're making that Star Wars Eclipse game. And I can't wait to see how that turns out. Because the FMV trailer had a really cool vibe to it. A very dark vibe to it. Very Sith culty. So I'm stoked to see what the actual game looks like. What with Star Wars games and prison escapes? Oh, you never you never heard of thirteen thirteen tenor? Yeah, that was um the big EA LucasArts fissure where they threw out all their coolest games they had in development. You mean the misogynist transphobe? Who? Wait, who's a who's a misogynist transphobe? Just so I I don't <laughs> I don't label the wrong person with the wrong label here. <laughs> How have you not heard of... Let me show you a picture, Tenna. Just real quick. Oh, David Cage. Do do people think he's a misogynist transphobe? Really? I must have missed the... I must have missed the drama around that one. Uh, yeah, this is it. Hang on. Uh, this was the, you played a Boba Fett type bounty hunter in a, like a prison escape kind of Uncharted style game.
Sean, why do you love David Cage when he made you get kidnapped in Heavy Rain? Oh yeah, the kid's name was Sean. No, but it was spelled different, wasn't it? S H A U N. Was a different spelling of Sean, so not me. Are you referring to the game you did with Ellen Page, Elliot Page? He made unwanted advances towards pre-transition, Elliot Page. He did. Oh wow! I'm surprised that is not more well known. Like, how did I miss that? Wait, what is that? That makes him a uh, a me too. That makes him a sexual harasser. How does that turn into misogynistic transphobe? Unless he said some shit about Elliot Page post-transition because he was cut about the unwanted advances thing. Um, where's a gameplay shot of this? Oh yeah, wait. Better, better shot. Uh, it's not the greatest picture, but... There was a trailer where they were showing this footage where, like, this entire train thing was falling apart with all the physics of stuff sliding around and you were dodging bullets and crates and stuff. Very cool looking sequence. Ellen Page is transnational. Yeah, I know that. Everyone knows about the Elliot Page transition. It's pretty well known. That's why I'm asking, because I know back then... He, I know back then when they made Heavy Rain, he was still Ellen Page. Um, so if David Cage made unwanted advances on, on when on her then, then that would be basically just Me Too shit, like um, sexual harassment in the workplace, and maybe a little bit of pedo. How old was? Okay, wait, maybe I should look this up. David Cage. Wait, what? Okay, this might be something to do with it. Remember when David Cage told Elliot Page that he had an album full of Page's childhood photos and then Elliot had to sue Cage for animating a nude shower scene without Elliot Page's consent? Ooh. There's some drama. I mean, that's different drama to what we're talking about here, but that's still juicy. Yeah, basically it was Space Uncharted where you were Boba Fett escaping from a space prison. That was basically the entire game in a nutshell. But the if you look up the gameplay footage trailer of it, it was like... It looked really cool. The lighting in particular of like the blaster colors in the dark were probably the best I've ever seen for a Star Wars game. Being a sexual harasser makes you inherently misogynistic. Well, that's 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 a fair call. I mean, no one's going to argue that being a sexual harasser makes you the opposite of misogynistic in, in that you love women too much that you can't help but harass them. <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever heard anyone make that argument. I think I'm happy going with the misogynistic label. Because um, if there wasn't some part of your mind that didn't inherently resent women, then you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't resort to harassment to try and get attention from them. I mean, I think that goes without saying. There's a certain amount of insecurity in all that. Or maybe a lot of insecurity. I mean, that's that's kind of the incel population in a nutshell, really. Insecurity that leads to the um, the um, resent the resention of women, women, the complete and utter resenting of women. It's almost like the attitude is almost like, how dare you be so hot and make me feel this horny? I hate you for it, and I wish only the worst for you. That's an incel in a nutshell. <laughs> They're fucking insane, man. I like this too much that I want it to die and be miserable. You fucking weirdos. They're just mad that they can't get any. And that's really what it comes down to.
because every straight man is attracted to women. It's just the ones that get denied access that start to get into that resentment section of the brain. But they fail to look inwards and maybe maybe define why you're being rejected in the first place because there's probably a very good reason and i'm sure that reason is tied to some form of personality flaws that would lead you to resenting women in the first place because if you you were a well-balanced individual it doesn't matter how much sex you're denied you wouldn't turn into a fuckhead because of it if you were actually a decent person to begin with and that led to MGT. Oh, what the fuck is that acronym? Um, Metal Gear Transsexual of the Wild. I think I just combined three ideas into one acronym. Elliot suits only because Ellie from The Last of Us looked like them. Yeah, but that's that was kind of a stupid lawsuit, though. They did look alike, but who gives a fuck? I don't know why Elliot took that much offense to a fictional character kind of looking like him. Her, when it was a... It's really awkward to talk about. It's awkward because, like, uh, we say him and we say Elliot, but we're talking about the part of their life when they were still an Ellen and a her. So you get your wires crossed a little bit. You got to, like, kind of think ahead of what you're saying. Google it. All right. MGTOW. Men going their own way. Oh my God, no. An anti-feminist, misogynistic, mostly online community advocating for men to separate themselves from women from a society which they believe has been corrupted by feminism. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this sounds like um, incel satire. This sounds like something you'd make up to make fun of incels. But it's actually real. <laughs> oh my god. We are so mad about not getting pussy that we wanna we we wanna change society into a society that pussy doesn't exist in. So that we have an excuse for not having gotten any. Wow. I can't be embarrassed about not getting any pussy if no pussy existed in the first place. There's some logic. There is some logic for your ass. Say him still. Oh yeah, no, that's what I've been doing. But that's what I'm saying is that if you talk too openly and too quickly about it, it's very easy to get your wires crossed, which is why like I'm talking slower and thinking ahead about how to talk about it. Because whenever I talk about the period when he was still Ellen, like your brain automatically refers back to what things were like then. To reference that period um so like i kind of have to get ahead of that and like replace words in my brain and like think about it a bit extra just to like stay respectful someone stop the planet i miss my stop <laughs> yep men going their own way that's not cringe at all <laughs> That is the same level of cringe as the straight pride parade. Remember when the um, remember when the homophobes decided that because the gays got a pride parade that they should have a straight pride parade, and then they started actually doing it once a year. They actually had their straight pride parade. Man, I would not be caught dead in a straight pride parade. How embarrassing! And also, like a fraction of the fashion you see at a gay pride parade. So, like. Straights, you better pull your socks up. Those pride parades are gross looking. What's with all the denim and the brown boots? And the flannel tops? Straights ain't got no class. Used to be heavy into political shit, but then you stop caring because there's no winning no matter what side you're on. I mean, it's a it's a way to get yourself mad about stuff that you can't do anything about. It's very easy to look at political stuff happen. Even at, like I'm Australian, so um, I shouldn't care as much about American politics. But still, like you see stuff going on on Twitter about American politics, and you catch up on what's happening with the Trump court case and all those stuff. And it's very easy for certain headlines to rile you up. Like sometimes I read stuff that actually gets me pretty pissed off, 
and then you have to remind yourself that like i have no skin in the game like i'm literally in a different country so i gotta try and chill and not get into a fucking twitter argument with some loser that's saying some stupid maga bullshit and that i just want to i just want to roast i want to tweet something bitchy so badly You're quite sensitive and can't deal with that stuff. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, it's very easy to get emotional about stuff that you disagree about someone with. And then they get pretty intense about it and very insulting and offensive about how they talk to you about your opinion on the matter. And then you get riled up and then you get angry back because you're upset that someone's treating you like a piece of shit for believing the opposite of something. But yeah, it's like, I've fallen down that rabbit hole a couple of times where I take the bait and I say something snarky in a Twitter comment, reply, and then it starts like a whole fucking stream of like sniping each other over some like issue. But it's only stuff that like, I really need to get a dig in because it's something particularly shitty. Um, which is why that MAGA stuff is a dangerous road because... During that whole Trump period, there was some, there was just some really stupid, really obvious racist, homophobic, just plain illogical shit that some of the right conservative people were throwing out there. And sometimes it was just too painful to ignore. And I had to snipe something. I had to say something catty or snarky in a Twitter reply. And then when I got a reply back and it's something smug. It's like that, that smugness of the reply back triggers me even more. And then I have to turn up the sniping and then it just turns into a thing. Sometimes it's not even political or kind of half political. I, I did that with fucking um, Masters of the Universe Revelations, which I really enjoyed. And I do respect Kevin Smith as a creator, even though he's he has made some stinkers as far as movies are concerned. But that's fine. Nobody's perfect. Um... But I like him as a dude. I really do. And his spearheading of the Masters of the Universe cartoon, I thought was an interesting choice. And then I watched the show and I was like, I actually really like this. I like what they're doing with this. And that show turned into such a culture war on fucking Twitter that I was a very easy mark for being triggered by people being extremely cruel about it. And like some people were so cruel and some of the stuff they said about Kevin Smith and like, some of the things that he was doing with the show was just flat out false. Um, they were just mis, um, misrepresenting stuff or completely making certain things up about the show and about Smith's uh, intentions just to like dig the heel in even more. And I got baited into a couple, a couple of arguments over that, which I really shouldn't have because all it did was make me angry and there was no resolution to it because nobody changes their mind on Twitter. So what are you fighting for? That's why he stopped using Facebook. Did Kevin Smith do... But No, that's way be before his time. His first movie was Clerks. And then Chasing Amy. And then Dogma. And then... Clerks, Chasing Amy, Dogma. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Clerks 2. Yeah, Clerks 3 did come out this year. I haven't seen it yet, but I wouldn't mind checking it out. Um, he did Cop Out with Bruce Willis. That's one of his bad ones. Uh, Jersey Girl is very divisive. Some people like it as a romantic comedy set in Jersey. Um, because, you know, the characterizations are fairly accurate, apparently, because he's from Jersey. Other people think it's, like, you know, kind of trash. Typical rom-com stuff. Nothing special. Uh, yeah, you made Tusk, which I think is a, it's half a good movie, half a bad movie. Um, he made Yoga Hoses, which I've heard is his worst movie, but I haven't seen that one. So I'm curious. I wouldn't mind seeing it just to check that out for myself, but apparently it's very bad. Uh, he made Red State, which I really liked, but is also divisive. Some people hate Red State as much as Tusk, but uh, I loved Red State. And I thought the first half of Tusk was really strong. But the second, uh, the second the main character got captured, 
and then the storyline switched to Johnny Depp's detective character, that's when I think it turned to shit. I think Johnny Depp's character is really distracting and ridiculous and just awful in every way. He-Man Netflix? Yeah, that was that's what I was talking about. Masters of the Universe Revelations uh, was the He-Man Netflix show, which did not have He-Man in the title, specifically because it was not just about He-Man, it was about all the Masters of the Universe and where their characters were today and what their arcs are going forward, including He-Man himself. Um, important uh, differentiation there. Um, but yeah, a lot of man babies got like really twisted into a, a tizzy over that fucking show, which I didn't understand at all because I watched the whole thing and I I dug the hell out of it. Even teared up once or twice, actually. Not a f ashamed to admit that. Um, and they're getting a season two. Uh, season two is on the way in the next year and a bit. Uh. Not, it's not called Revelations, it's called Revelations, it's called it starts with an R it's another word like Revelations but it's, I can't remember what it is right now Tusk is just like the dude as the walrus is burnt in my mind I, like the walrus concept is fine Revolu yeah, I think it's Revolution Yeah, that's that's the official name of season 2 that's on the way which is funny because the haters still talk about it like it was a massive bomb and they still use terms like uh, go woke, go broke to describe it. But it fucking never went broke. It was a success. Just because there's maybe, let's say, 50,000 haters. Let's just say there's 50,000 haters online. Very vocal haters. Um, making it look like everyone hates the show because they're all fucking Twitter typing and shit. That's 50,000 out of, like, millions. Like, the actual... Like, I remember an article written where they, did an inter they had an interview with the um, one of the heads at Netflix. And they were saying that um, the reason they ignore all that culture war shit on the internet is because they go by their actual statistics, their actual numbers of performance. And he was saying that their actual performance numbers were, like, the actual... It might have been tens of thousands of people that were vocally hating it on the internet, but he said that that was like a drop in the bucket. It was like a fraction of the amount of numbers they actually got of people that actually watched the show and gave it the thumbs up. And he was saying like, that's why you have to be careful about the internet. It's because the internet is not the world. The internet is a microcosm of very specific kinds of people butting heads. Out there in the real world, there are, are like 50 million people that have no idea about the culture war around the show that are sitting there watching the show with their kids and are having a great time and are probably watching it like nine, ten times over. You know, you know what kids are like. So they were like, yeah, the internet would make you think that the show was a bomb and everyone hates it, but he's like, the actual real world, real normie numbers, the normies, the Normans, as some people call them, is like astronomically different to what it's like the internet made it look like, which is why I got a season two and it is generally considered a success. Norma the no, that's we don't talk about Norma the North. That's a terrible movie. <laughs> that's let's not reference that movie. Go Snoke, go incredibly disappointing. Well, he didn't really lead anywhere. I mean, so many of those slogans are embarrassing, man. The go woke, go broke thing is a fucking embarrassing slogan because it never actually. It's a slogan that refers to something that has never happened. Nothing that the woke hating crowd has ever hated on or rallied against has ever failed everything that is in their eyes gone woke has been successful so what the fuck has ever gone broke by being woke nothing because these people do not have the finger on the pulse of culture at all they think like their only own little microcosm is how things really are and they're like fighting some like war for quality or whatever because like apparently feminism and wokeness is like destroying everything that one love it's not happening. It's not. It's fake. None of that shit's true. None of it ever happened. You're, they've made up this entire war in their own heads. Just as an excuse to be shittier people. If you want to be sexist and rally on a show for having a female lead because, like, you have a dick and that annoys you, 
like that makes you look bad so instead of just outwardly admitting that you're sexist and you don't want to see a woman have dialogue in a show you play the culture war thing and you whinge about woke and you know woke hollywood like destroying your favorite franchises by changing things by forcing um uh equality into it because like now there has to be like a specific quota of like um dark skin characters or gay characters or some bullshit that they just pulled out of their ass it's like it none of none of it's real you you're making all of it up to make yourself mad so you can make toxic youtube videos complaining about it that's not true female ghostbusters is the main one no but the thing is female ghostbusters was not a good movie but it wasn't even that wasn't an example of Go work for a broke. That was an example of they wanted to make a new Ghostbusters with a whole different thing. And they had access to four um, female comedians from SNL that already worked well together. And they thought that they could mimic the, um, the camaraderie of the four male comedians from the first movie. Because I can see on paper how that would make sense theoretically. Because, um, what are their names again? Kristen Wiig. Um... The hilarious lesbian one. Fuck, I forget her name, but she's like the funniest one of a lot of them. Um, Melissa McCarthy and the black chick from SNL, which I also forgot her name. So those those four are actually pretty talented comedians, and they all come from the same comedic place in the same way that um, Bill Murray and uh, Hal Ramis and all them came from the comedies of their era. So on paper, I can see what they were doing theoretically, but the movie just didn't work. Like, they accidentally made a movie that felt like you were watching a cheap series of SNL skits strung together, which was unfortunate. And the style of comedy didn't seem to understand Kristen Wiig. Is, a, is Kristen Wiig a lesbian? I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Wow, that's okay. I learned something today. I did not know that she was lesbian. Um, but what, can, can you remember the name of the other one? Um, she's like the funniest chick, aside from Kristen Wiig, she's like the funniest chick on SNL. Like, I watch her clips on, um, YouTube and they kill me. Oh my god. Okay, wait, I don't, I've got the internet right here, why am I... Ghostbusters. Uh, wrong Ghostbusters, whoops. I shouldn't have just typed in Ghostbusters. How do I pick the right one? What was it? 2016? Kate McKinnon. Hey, there it is. Okay. It was Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon is one of the funniest human beings on the planet. <laughs> She's such a weirdo, but in like the perfect way. She does a series of like SNL skits. There's like a, um, a whole bunch of them that she does every, every other episode where she's like this, foul mouth chain smoking redneck chick that's always like on a panel talking about getting kidnapped by aliens yeah Kate. yeah there you go sorry there's a bit of a stream lag so i found her name right before you typed it genie i think there's a, a big stream lag right now because i think that that was far behind Wait, i fucking love kate mckinnon so like it was it was extra disappointing for me watching the 2016 Ghostbusters because I think Kristen Wiig is hilarious. I think Kate McKinnon is hilarious. Um, what was the other one? Leslie Jones is okay. I don't mind her. I'm not that like into her comedy, but she's fine. Melissa McCarthy. I don't really like her comedy, but she's an amazing dramatic actress. If you watch her in serious dramas, she's actually like a really good actress. It's crazy. Um, so to see like these actresses like do this thing that sounds like a good idea on paper and then you watch the movie and it's like wow I feel like this completely missed the point of even the style of humor that the original Ghostbusters is all about that blue collar dry kind of thing that, that they did that worked so well and they turn it into slapstick SNL skit comedy which just is not the same thing it can't hold candle to the originals I never actually saw Afterlife. I was kind of burnt out at that point. <laughs> oh, 
Although it's also around the time of Ghostbusters 2016 that we learned that um, that Chris Hemsworth was a great comedic actor. Like Chris Hemsworth, that was one of the high points of Ghostbusters 2016 is that Chris Hemsworth makes a really good dumb blonde. And I love that. I love that flip of the stereotype that instead of a bunch of male professionals that have a ditzy blonde secretary, it was a bunch of female professionals that had a ditzy blonde male secretary that was obviously like a himbo in every way, shape or form. But he was like so dumb, it was like cartoonish, but somehow that made it like funnier again. You forgot he was in the movie. I mean, yeah, like every, I'm pretty sure every scene with um, Chris Hemsworth's himbo secretary character cracked me up. And that was just, that was right around the time that everyone realized that he could do comedy. Because he had, I don't think he'd done too, too much before that. Um, like the first two Thors even, they didn't really give him that much comedy to do. Not like when uh, Ragnarok came around. Yeah, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised if Thor Ragnarok was a direct result of seeing him in smaller roles actually being given um, comedic opportunities and nailing it. And them going, wait, why we have, why haven't we have, why haven't we give Chris Chris Hemsworth a chance to go all comedy? Why has no one done that? That's nuts. That that's never happened. And now it's happening a lot. <laughs> he pops up in comedy roles all the time. You know who else is surprisingly good comedic chops that is underutilized? Jason Statham. Of all people. Did you ever see Spy? Jason Statham is hilarious in Spy. In fact, even Melissa McCarthy is actually pretty good in that movie. Which is rare for her comedy roles because... A lot of her comedy roles, her lead comedy roles can be kind of grating. But Spy was quite good. And she was funny in it. But good lord, Jason Statham. <laughs> it's so funny in that movie. I can't believe we haven't seen more funny Jason Statham yet. Statham was a walking meme of himself. Yeah, exactly. Like, they cast him as a male secret agent, but like, a super exaggeration of what a Statham male secret agent would be. Have I seen Super Melissa McCarthy Super or anything? Oh god, no. I saw the trailer for that, and I was like, no. <laughs> that looks really bad. I don't think I could I don't think I could do it. I couldn't believe that movie existed, because when that when that superhero movie she did, when the trailer for that came out, that was already very deep into the era of everyone hating on her for her comedies being like really trash. Um, so that movie trailer seemed like a parody, like, it seemed like a parody of a Melissa McCarthy movie that you would make, but it was like legit a Melissa McCarthy comedy. Like if I would, what I'm saying is if I was, if I wanted to make a, f make fun of a shitty Melissa McCarthy comedy, I would make a trailer like that superhero thing she did as a piss take. Oh yeah, the Crank movies were hilarious. Yeah, you're right. But almost unintentionally because he plays it straight in those. The comedic value comes from just how crazy the movie's edited and written. Like it's just balls to the wall the entire time. Which is kind of hilarious how they keep that pace up the entire film. Um... But yeah, you got Wig and McKinnon. Mc oh, so um, the Kristen Wig is straight. So it is Kate McKinnon. Yeah, I know. I knew Mc Kate McKinnon was a lesbian. I thought maybe both of them were when you said that. But that's fair. But Kristen Wig and Kate McKinnon are both like the two funniest female comedians from SNL by far. I can watch any SNL clip on YouTube of any either of the two of them, and it it it's amazing. The first crank was not pretty normal. It was pretty intense. It's just the second one goes a little bit too over the top and gets a bit comic, like gets a bit cartoony with it. But yeah, they're both hilarious though. They're both worth watching. Um, 
But yeah, if you haven't seen Melissa McCarthy in many dramas, um, do it. Because she has like Oscar nomination level acting chops when it comes to actual real roles, like drama roles. Statham is in Crank 2, yeah. And yes, he did die at the end of the first one. But yeah, he is still in Crank 2. <laughs> Remember at the end of Crank 1 when he fell out the helicopter and hit the street? Um, yeah, they drag him to hospital and he gets up and he leaves. So, <laughs> that's, that's a good indicator of how silly the sequel is. They just don't give a fuck. Yeah, they have to replace his heart and they put like a battery operated like engine heart in, like Sham said. And that's what the difference between Crank 1 and Crank 2 is. In Crank 1, he had to keep pumping himself with adrenaline to keep himself alive from the poison. In Crank 2, he has to keep charging his heart with electricity because it's now it's now an engine. So he has to find clever ways of getting electricity into his body. Like at one point in the hospital, he defibrillates himself. And at one point, he like opens a car hood and takes the two leads out and puts them on his tongue. Yeah. The only thing to keep in mind with Crank 2 is that they try so hard to up the intensity and the ante from Crank 1 that it gets really over the top. Like, it gets, it kind of crosses the line of stupidity quite frequently. Like Sham was saying, like, it gets, it just gets absurd. But it's still fun. Like, it's so crazy and it's so stupid that it's still fun all the way through. You're not going to be bored. Um, yeah, I think I saw it when I was a teenager as well. <laughs> There's no such thing as two over the top. Yeah. It's just like, Crank 1 rides a pretty nice fine line of, of, um, high speed, high pace intensity, but grounded. It's like, it's kind of just riding that line. Like the editing is, is absurd and as fast paced as like the action. And like, it all just kind of sinks. I think Crank 2 kind of goes past that line a little bit into like pure cartoonishness, which is where some people got turned off. But if you don't give a shit about that, then you'll be fine. If the more crazy the merrier works for you, then it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, doesn't, isn't there a fight scene towards the end where he literally catches on fire and he's just running around literally in flames, just like punching and kicking people? Like, he just doesn't fucking die. <laughs> the man is immortal. Oh, also, um, the actor that played Pedro in Napoleon Dynamite, remember his character in Crank 1? Who's like a friend of his that helps him out a few times, and he ends up getting killed. Uh, they murder him. He comes back again, but as the identical twin brother of the character he played in the first movie. So they just put his character back in the movie, but they just said like, oh, it's his, it's just his fucking, um, it's just his twin brother, his more gay twin brother, more flamboyant twin brother. Okay. I think with that, we should call it a night. That game was so short. We spent the rest of the, th the stream just talking shit. Midnight Fight Express was like the purge combined with Crank. Yeah, I think you did say something like that. I don't remember Crank, but I think I remember you saying Purge. Something like that. I will get to that, don't worry. Like, um, it might not be anytime soon, but yeah. Good night, Genie. Yeah, I'm clocking off any minute now. So I'll catch you next time. Enjoy work <laughs> as much as you can. I feel stupid telling someone to enjoy work, because no one ever enjoys work. I hate the people that say, what's that fucking slogan? Um, love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life. Like, what? There's nothing I've ever done for money that I've ever loved that much. I don't know what it would be. Oh yeah, raid time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. I still have um, Shin Saito's um, stream open on my other screen. I kept it on my on screen three 
raid that you declined for me? It wasn't declined. It was accepted for free. The rejection was to refund you because I was already doing your request, my liege. Um, okay. So I'm going to run the end screen as usual while I set up the raid button on the side. You're going to go to bed soon too anyway? Yeah, well, it's almost 4 a.m. I don't know what we're all still doing here. Especially you, Sham. Like, you don't have to work right now. So you don't actually have to be up at four in the morning, but you, here you are. <laughs> I don't know what my excuse is. I felt like playing a weird artistic puzzle game. Um... Oh, fuck, it's Christmas Eve tomorrow night. Ooh. Yep. So I'm still doing a Christmas Eve stream. It's probably going to be very quiet because most people are going to be doing um, actual Christmas stuff and family stuff. So I don't expect there to be much stream action, but I'm going to be here doing a whole Christmas Eve stream with decorations, and I'm going to be making a gingerbread house. <laughs> you have a lunch tomorrow? Oh, okay, yeah. You're going to have to go to bed now and wake up midday just before lunch and go straight to it. Yeah, by the way, that was a spoiler for the Christmas Eve stream that's happening tonight. Um, I bought a I bought a gingerbread house kit with icing sugar and everything. I'm going to make I'm going to make a gingerbread house live on stream. And then I'm going to make a channel point request to make me eat it. <laughs> <laughs> which which might not pan out because like I said, it's Christmas Eve. People have real plans, so uh, there might not be many people on Twitch, so it might be pretty boring. But either way, I'm going to eat that fucking house whole. Um I'm maybe I'm going to try not to eat for a while beforehand so I can basically I can potentially get the whole house in me. See how that goes. <laughs> you might be watching movies with the fam. Yeah, see that's what I mean. Like it's Christmas Eve. People are going to have real plans for sure. Like people are going to have uh especially with family, people are going to have family plans, people are going to have pl uh plans with friends. Like most people are going to have real things to do tonight. So I'm predicting it's going to be fairly slow going, but I'm going to be here anyway, because what else am I doing? What is Christmas date again? Well, it's three in, it's four in the morning now for me on the day before Christmas. So it's four in the morning and tonight at around 8 PM, I'm going to do a Christmas Eve stream. You bought Reacher for your dad's missus? Oh, cool. Oh, the, the Reacher TV show with the guy that actually looks like Reacher. Nice. I may have mentioned this before, Sham, but don't you reckon the guy who plays the new Reacher would make a perfect um, uh, Doom Slayer if they made a live-action Doom movie? He looks just like the little picture in the old Doom game. You know how that you had that little face? in the bottom middle of the screen on the HUD in the original Doom. The one that's always grimacing. Looks just like that guy. It's crazy the actor really bulked up. He sure did. You never celebrated Christmas, so I'm kind of lost in dates. We celebrate New Year. Oh, that's fair. I'm going to do a New Year stream as well, which I also assume will be quiet because like with Christmas, most people will off be off at New Year's parties and at the fireworks show at all the firework shows because everyone all over the world do them. Isn't the laser team movie is, Oh, I never saw that movie. Um, okay. Before we end up getting distracted and waffling on even more, because this is, we're going off on so many tangents here. I'm going to, I'm going to end screen. So good night, everybody. And while it's end screened, I'm going to set up and start the raid. So it's going to say goodbye on the screen, but hang around if you want to jump across to um, Mr. Saito. Wait, something's changed. Oh, fuck. Wait, Sham, guess what just happened? 
Guess it just happened. I'm now in a stream called Tropical Ray. Because Shin Saito, while I was saying goodbye to you guys, just raided some other guy. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I was just about to end the stream. Right as your friend, the, the guy you recommended, ended his stream. Yeah, we talked for fucking ages. Like, when did I finish that game? Two and a half hours? It was like 2.39, and now it's 5.09. We've talked for like half of the stream. <sighs> Raid me, Hune? Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Keep him in mind for some other time, though. Be nice to get, like, actually still go back and raid that so that dude that you requested. I like to raid new people. Oh, it's a, um... It's a VTuber. Noise, noise. Her tags are English, chatty, anime, cute, comfy, grinding, VTuber, crazy, feet, good speller. Can we go back to the grinding one? Because that was hot. What do you mean by grinding? <laughs> On a love pillow? She sp she she misspelled good speller. She's got so she has a good sense of humor. We know that much at least. It's she spelled it G O O D S P E double L U R. <laughs> it's a good tag. I like the tag. What is um uh in her title? What does exclamation mark ugly exclamation mark gg mean? What are those commands? She has a great song with another Twitch streamer you'll send to me. Yeah, cool. Just send it to whichever DMs you're closest to. Ugh. I feel bad that we've like, we fucked around for so long that we've like, we've lost people. So we're not, we're not, um, raiding with as many people as usual. We would have had five or six at one point, but we finally got us down, ourselves down to three. <laughs> we can raid someone smaller if you want. I don't really care. Um, I'm, I've already got her open. I might as well do this one now. But really, we talked so much shit, we probably should have done this back when we had six people. When we were originally trying to go to the other guy. But, you know, it's it happens. We are, um, we are prone to distraction and shit talk. It happens around here. My bad. It's probably partly, largely my fault. Okay. Good night, everybody. I'm going to end screen it, but then we're going to raid. I'll talk to you guys later. Night. <laughs>